A message from Norfolk State University. Since 1935, NSU Athletic Conference digital broadcast of MEAC football right here from Norfolk, Virginia, as your Norfolk State University Spartans get set to take on the visiting North Carolina Central University Eagles. Ross Gordon here joined today by Glenn Mason as we get set for homecoming for Norfolk State. The Spartans coming in with a record of 3-2. and two. North Carolina Central with a record of 2-3 and three with a big win coming over Howard 40-35 to 35 under first-year interim head coach uh, Granville Eastman. He's done a great job of rallying his troops after starting off slow, winning one of their first four games. They won their last game against Howard and their first conference win. Norfolk State coming off of a tough loss down in Tallahassee. The Florida a m 17 nothing was the final score. The Spartans turned the ball over three times for head coach Latrell Scott. The Spartans looking to get things going again here today. Back to their winning ways. They came into today's game three and two. Winnings, winners of their last two before Florida a and We'll take a timeout. And after this, we'll come back and we'll highlight some key players today for both squads. You're listening and watching MEAC football right here on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. At one time, text was simply written words. Mail was something from the mailman. And surfing was done at the beach. Not anymore. Now we tweet, we ping, we bing, we're spammed and blasted. Despite these changes, local radio and television still reach more people than all other forms of media combined. And their websites are the most visited sites around. Local radio and television, reaching more people, touching more lives. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college, which ends up making the future better for all of us. My name is Alicia, and I am your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. A message from Norfolk State University. Not only does NSU make a profound impact on a student's life, but the university has a substantial effect on our entire region and the Commonwealth. From faculty and staff salaries, to student expenditures, to building projects, every year our school creates a $171 million impact on our state's economy. Learn more about the quality and achievements of Norfolk State at nsu.edu slash impact. Hot, hot. 91. Hello and welcome back to Dick Bright Stadium as we get set for action here. At Dick Bryce Stadium, Granville Eastman, 2-3 and three in his first season as head coach of North Carolina Central. He's led by their quarterback and do-it-all quarterback. He's had a solid year, leads him in rushing and passing. Chauncey Caldwell as Coach Eastman, uh, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina Central for some time, moving into the head coaching spot. He has done a solid job getting this young offense together. And on the other side, we look at the head coach of Norfolk State, Coach Latrell Scott. Coach Scott now in his fourth year as head coach for Norfolk State. His overall record 37 and 30 in his 10th season as a head coach, 12 and 21 here at 15 to 23, excuse me, here at Norfolk State. Ross Gordon joined by Glenn Mason. Glenn, a uh, big day for Norfolk State, especially for the quarterback, Jawan Carter. Carter will get the football first to start this game. Again, coming in off a game where he threw three interceptions. 177 yards for 3,000 for him. He's key for this Norfolk State offense. And so in order for him to have the game that you're expecting, Ross, we need a good game from Terrell Lipscomb, a senior, 6'3", 290 at left tackle. At the left guard, you had Jalen Powell. He's 6'3", 
305, that's an offensive line. The center, Wes Jones, 305-61, tough. Justin Reed at guard. As we get set, North Carolina Central again led by their quarterback in Chauncey Caldwell. And Caldwell will uh, be on the sideline first as we'll see the Norfolk State offense for the first time. And all Biak kickoff and return specialist Marcus Taylor stands at his own one-yard line We're awaiting the kick from North Carolina Central's Jonathan DeLuca. He runs up, puts toe to leather, and Marcus Taylor will watch this one bounce over his head and through the end zone. And the Spartans will start this drive from their own 25-yard line. And we'll see the sophomore signal caller for Norfolk State. He wears number eight, Jawan Pootie Carter, out of Highland Springs High School, gets uh, the ball in his hands first. He gets the play from Coach Latrell Scott, the offensive play caller for Norfolk State, and will be underway in just a few moments here at homecoming at Norfolk State University. Hewlett will start in the backfield for the Spartans. He'll be back there with Jawan Carter in the pistol. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. The pass defense has struggled a little bit for North Carolina Central this year. Let's see what they decide to do here. They played a lot of man. Let's see what they do on this first play. As the handoff goes to Hewlett, he avoids one tackler, and the backfield gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Not much more than that. And it'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Spartans, and we talked about it uh, for the last couple games. Staying on schedule is going to be huge for Norfolk State. They're testing out the defense now. They're picked up just a little short of a yard, and here we go again. Second down. Second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Carter in the shotgun. Hewlett to his right. Two wide receivers to the far side. One wide receiver. That's Isaiah Winstead to the near side. As Carter drops back to pass. Quick drop to Winstead. And Winstead can't handle the pass. As Devontae Reynolds came up from his safety spot to put a hit on Winstead. But it looked like Winstead never caught the football as he juggled it a little bit. It'll be a third down situation for the Spartans in 10. He just took his gloves off. The receiver gloves off. He kind of batted the ball down. So... It didn't have the feel on the ball that he wanted to have. Let's see can he can make a grab now. So the Spartans need 10 yards here on their first drive. Two wide receivers far to the far side, one to the near. And Central has kept two safeties in the middle of the field uh, for these last uh, two plays. Here's Carter. He drops back to pass with time, steps up. Pass is going to be incomplete, too high for Awana. And again, you saw a too deep look for North Carolina Central. And the Spartans go three and out here on their first drive, and we'll see Taylor Goaty punt for Norfolk State back deep to return the punt for North Carolina Central will be E.J. Hicks, the redshirt sophomore. I like the way Carter checked off on his primary receiver that time and went uh, with the, uh, the sideline pattern and it, a, a little lower pass, and that would have been a great reception. Goaty will get this punt away. It's a high hanger that E.J. Hicks will take on the run. At around the 37-yard line, he gets to the 45 before he's taken down. Nigel Chavis with the tackle for Norfolk State, and that will send us to our first media timeout, 14-14. Left to go here in the first quarter. North Carolina Central will have the football when we come back. You're watching me at football on the ESPN3. APR and test drive any crossover for a chance to win. Drive your ambition. Mitsubishi Motors. Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium with 14-14 left to go here in the first quarter. Chauncey Caldwell back on onto the field for the first time for Central. He drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete out into the flat. JT Wahi on the stop as the pass was complete to Xavier McCoy, the junior, who now has 14 receptions on the year, over 180 yards. They give him credit for four yards on first down. It'll be second down and six for the Eagles as Caldwell drops back to pass again pass is going to be complete and eluding a tackle and getting a first down yardage inside Norfolk State territory is EJ Hicks he gets down to the 36 yard line and Caldwell two for two to start this ball game short passes in the flat which has resulted in big games EJ Hicks inside of Norfolk State territory as Hicks picked up 15 yards as he was tackled by Deshaun Dixon Caldwell on the quarterback keeper. He'll pick up the first down and more. He's on his way towards the 10. He gets inside the 10. It'll be a first down and goal for North Carolina Central at the four-yard line. A quarterback keeper there. Caldwell leads the team in rushing as well. Will give Central a first down and goal from the four. He's not going to do a whole lot of 
things differently from that. They're really fond of that quarterback draw, and that won't be the last time that you see that play, Ross. And they give Caldwell credit to the six-yard line, back him up two yards. That's Caldwell in the shotgun, hands it off to Totten. Totten tries to break it left side, and the Spartans there. As they drop him for a loss of about four on the play, back to the nine-yard line, a three, baby, as Totten was corralled by Nigel Chavis. Karan Speller also there for Norfolk State. That's that top-notch secondary or linebacker core that we have. And once the line is held up by Tyrell Litscombe, Jalen Powell, and Wes Jones, that gives our linebackers free run or anything coming through those gaps. They're doing a good job. Well, they're going to do a better job. 30-yard rush there for Caldwell to get the Eagles inside the 10 as Caldwell drops back to pass, lobs it into the back of the end zone. He was looking for Xavier McCoy on a quick slant. Good double coverage there. Now we're Kennelly. And JT Wahi on the spot. It'll bring up a third down and goal from the nine for, J for North Carolina Central. He was also looking forward to take advantage of that quarterback draw, but he saw that the North State defensive linemen uh, stood right in there and maintained their positions and their responsibilities. Again, three wideouts in the formation. Totten is the back in the backfield. As again, it's going to be a quarterback keeper. Nothing doing as Caldwell was tripped up. Again, Karan Speller there, and Caldwell slow to get up. And also, an offensive lineman slow to get up. And it looked like the center for North Carolina Central, Okeke, Okeke, excuse me, down on the field as it will bring up fourth down and the Spartans defense, which we've seen a lot of this year, bending but not breaking here, getting inside of the 10-yard line for North Carolina Central. But the Spartans defense bowed up, did a great job. Uh, forcing a field goal attempt here for North Carolina Central. Actually, that's Andrew Dale, the left guard for North Carolina Central. He'll wear number 50 today. He's helped off of the field, and we'll see the field goal unit in Adam Lippy, the six foot, 200 pound red shirt freshman. We'll try it from 25 yards away out of the hold of John Vaccaro, the punter. If there's been any bane to the North State football program, it is the play of our specialty teams. We're expecting a big breakout game for them, too. So Schleckler on to snap it away. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. The kick is up and through. Central drives to the nine-yard line, gets caught up there, and a media timeout will be taken on the field now as North Carolina Central leads North Big State. 3-0 with 11.56 left to go here in the first quarter. You're watching We Have Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Okay, let's set the record straight. How do you reach a lot of people? You know, really get the message out. Local radio and television. Surprised? Who do you turn to when the big bad storm's rolling in? Local radio and TV. Yeah, that's right. Do you watch the Super Duper Bowl on your smartphone or on a 60-inch HD? Thought so. In the Masters, NBA Finals, college football, The Simpsons? You get the idea? Hands down, the top dog. Local radio and television. Reaching more people, touching more lives. Brought to you by the Virginia Association of Broadcasters in this station. My sister Katie and I are bargain hunters. But my sister Kelly showed me an article that made me change a really bad habit. I used to buy bargain knockoffs on the street. You mean counterfeit merchandise? And this can lead to more Americans losing their jobs. So, no more buying fakes, right? Right, just honest bargain hunting. Counterfeits hurt, but you have the power to stop them. Go to www.ncpc.org forward slash get real. Brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, U.S. Department of Justice. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I'd like kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. A message from Norfolk State University. Since 1935, NSU has been providing students with the kind of high-quality education that has prepared them for successful lives. That quality has been affirmed through continuous accreditation of the university, along with over 20 accredited programs from 15 accrediting agencies. Norfolk State serves a vital purpose for our students, their families, and our community. Learn more about Norfolk State at nsu.edu slash quality. 
Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 11.56 left to go here in the first quarter. Norfolk State trailing 3-0 as Marcus Taylor will catch the kickoff at the round the one yard line tries to break it out to the left does gets out to the 25 yard line gets pushed out of bounds at around the 26 yard line solid return for the senior out of Richmond and the Spartans will start this drive at their own 27 yard line they started the last drive at their own 25 Matt Stevens made the stop for North Carolina Central as the Spartans come back out you can see Aaron Savage at the tailback spot two wide receivers to the far side one to the near side man to man I'm interested in that let's see as the handoff goes to Savage he makes a cut at the line of scrimmage gets out to the 29 yard line a pickup of two on first down as there is a light drizzle outside here at Dick Price Stadium which that, is an opportunity to say this is where the new football turf pays off. And this is a second down now and eight for Norfolk State. We'll see how the the handling of the balls. We've seen one slip uh, already, one drop by Isaiah Winstead. We've also seen a high pass from Jawan Carter. Let's see how uh, the Spartans make the adjustment here on the second drive, on the second down and eight. Carter hands it off. This is Brent on the carry. He gets to the 30-yard line. That'll bring up about a third down and seven as Isaac makes the stop for North Carolina Central. And it'll bring up a third down and seven from the 30-yard line. Third and seven, an obvious passing down. Let's see how uh, young Pootie, Jawan Carter, handles that. And once his adrenaline has settled down for his homecoming here. 10.50 left to go here in the first quarter. Carter, six foot, 175-pound sophomore from Richmond, since it's tied in out in motion to Anthony Williams. Three wide outs to the far side, one to the near. As Carter drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, and he gets hit in the backfield. Coming up and making the stop is Randy Anyamun. And that's going to bring up a fourth down situation. Just the second punt, uh, just the second, excuse me, the second sack in conference play for Norfolk State. And we'll see Taylor Goatee for the second time to punt back to EJ Hicks. As Goaty will get the punt away, and it's a short kick that will take a Norfolk State bounce out of bounds or near the sideline at around the 33-yard line. As we will take a timeout, and Central will come out for the second time on offense, leading Norfolk State by three. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3 and at the NSU Sports Network. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we get back to action on the carry for Bobby North Carolina Price. Central is Martin. Martin was taken down out of bounds by JT Wahi after a pickup of about four on the play. It'll bring up a second down and six for the Eagles. Totten back in at running back. Chauncey Caldwell is your quarterback. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Totten now split out to the in motion as the drop back by Caldwell is a good and he gets it into the hands of his receiver picking up about five yards on the play was Martin Quintrell Chung on the stop it'll bring up a first down for the Eagles the Eagles tried an interior screen on that play he led out to the outside then turned back in picked up three offensive linemen but you know what Spartans defense right in there on the case as Caldwell comes out with the first down and 10 now. He'll hand it off to Totten. Totten eludes a tackle in the backfield. Dale Craig is going to take him down after a loss of about five on the play. Okay, Ross, that's the defense that we know. It'll break up a second down and 16 for North Carolina Central. 840 left to go here in the First quarter, Titan goes in motion. Caldwell drops back to pass with time. Caldwell looking out in the flat, can't find anybody, and throws it away. Good coverage out there in the flat by Bobby Price as he was looking for his check down. 
and it'll bring up a second down and actually a third down at 16. He had nowhere to go. The Spartans really maintained their areas of responsibility on that play. As the Spartans send in subs, and we'll see a dot. We'll see that nickel package here. Yeah, Deshaun Dixon just ran into the game at defensive end over there. As Central sends three wide receivers out to the near side. As a screen nearly intercepted by Nigel Chavis. Will bring up four down. Chavis had the ball in his hands as Caldwell threw the ball right into his hands. Chavis might have had his second touchdown of the year on the defensive side of the football. But he can't hold on to it, and we'll see the punting unit. And John Picaro for North Carolina Central, who leads Norfolk State 3-0 with 8.27 left to go here in the first quarter. I tell you, on defense, Ross, um, Matt Dawson's defense has those Spartans everywhere they're supposed to be. And then we're taking advantage of it. As Taylor will call for a fair catch at the 21-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive. They've started deep in their own territory uh, on their first three drives, one at the 25, one at the 27, and now at the 21-yard line. And the Spartans really haven't got anything going here on the offensive side of the football. Let's see what they do on their third offensive possession of the day. Caldwell, 4 of 7, uh, throwing the football for 29 yards. Juwan Carter now 0 for 2. He's been sacked once here today. I'd like to see them unleash Brent and Savage. That can only serve to help the passing game, Ross. As Brent will be your back in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the far side. One in motion is Marcus Taylor to the near side. Carter waits the snap, rolls, drops out, kicks it out to Brent in the flat. Brent avoids the tackle, stays on his feet, and then breaks another tackle, stays on his feet again, lowers his shoulder, and, and the Spartans pick up their first first down of the ball game as Deontay Fair makes the stop for North Carolina Central. Juwan Carter looked off the receivers in deep patterns and then found Brent over there in the wing. Great play. As Good a, play. That's the first completion of the night for Juwan Carter. As the Spartans come back to the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As Williams goes in motion, he flares out. Carter with Brent to his right. Carter drops back to pass. Winstead wide open. Makes a tackle. Makes a one-man miss and steps out of bounds at the, it looks like the 45-yard line. He'll have enough for the first down. Nice elusive move there by Isaiah Winstead as he got out of bounds, and the Spartans will have a first down and 10. Winstead is one of Coach Scott's favorite receivers, and he ran an excellent slant, caught wide open. Ball, no, no, The ball was put where no one could get it but him. Two wide receivers out to the far side. One to the near, Carter in the shotgun. Brent to his right again. The Spartans starting to move the ball here. RPO as the pass is going to be knocked down to the line of scrimmage. I think for North Carolina Central, I give the tip to number 49. That's Kiaku, the inside linebacker. Right, Kiaku did have a little support from Cox there, the defensive end. And that will bring up a second down and 10 as the Spartans have moved the ball through the air here on their last two, actually last two of their last three plays, two of five now for Carter. He has 24 yards passing as Carter again sends Taylor in motion to the far side of the field. It's going to be a handoff off to Brent. Brent had some room to start. Backs his way to two yards on the play before he was corralled. Nice job coming up and making the stop there by Brandon Bailey for North Carolina Central. That will bring up a third down and eight from the Norfolk State 48-yard line with seven minutes to go here in the second in the first quarter. Now, Brent is averaging about 4.1 yards carry. So that's some good security going in there, as well as uh, Savage, who's at 4.4. So we have some good backs, and we have some depth, Ross. Hewlett stays in the tailback. Two wide receivers to the far side. Actually, three. One to the near side as Central backing off as Carter will take off, and he looks like he'll have enough for the first down. Spins his way towards the first down marker. He looked like he had enough, but he's going to be stopped about a yard shy. He kind of moved a little bit and ran into a player at the 46-yard line of North Carolina Central. It'll be a fourth down and one. And it's the decision time for Norfolk State, and they'll keep their offense on the field. As a quarterback draw, makes it a yard, a full yard here for a first down for the Spartan offense. Got to go and, for it. And that's what Coach Scott will do with six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Central will crowd the line of scrimmage as Awana goes in motion. 
And we'll see man coverage as Carter hands it off to Hewlett and nothing doing. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, nothing much more than that. As the Spartans will turn it over on downs. And the central defense led by Brandon Bailey. Also, Brandon Bailey will make the play. It'll be a first down for Central at their own 46-yard line. So the gamble for Norfolk State uh, will go the other way. And we'll see North Carolina Central with the football in Chauncey Caldwell. They come out for the third time, leading 3 nothing with 5.43 remaining here in the first quarter. But you got to take those gambles. It gives your offensive line and shows them that you have confidence in them. And a, a hitch here, a hitch there. And, you know, Eagles are looking to scout reports, too. As Caldwell will keep it. And, again, Caldwell will have room to run. He'll pick up the first down and more. He'll go out of bounds at around the Norfolk State 37-yard line. Actually, 38-yard line. Caldwell leads his team in rushing and passing. And, again, he's doing a great job on the ground. He has a 30-yard run today. Would that at, quarterback draw the on the running he now also has a 17-yard run, which gives him 47 for the ball game. Caldwell drops back to pass. He gets flushed out of the pocket, looking downfield. Pass is going to be knocked away. JTY, he comes up and makes the play. The pass was intended for Central's number 13, and that's Nike Martin. Why he was all over Martin. You know, when Norfolk State is in there one and one defense, I'm telling you, we got two good lockdown, shutdown corners in why he and Quinterly, probably some of the best in the league. As the Spartans will force a second down and 10 for Central. Caldwell in the shotgun again, three. Wide out to the near side as the handoff goes uh, on the end of round to EJ Hicks. Hicks looking for a block and escapes a tackle and gets forced out of bounds as he eluded Aaron Chandler's tackle. Gets inside the 35 to the 37 yard line. Will bring up a third down and manageable four for Central. At the North Big State 32 yard line. And stoppage of play with 505 left to go. Once again, you got to be wary of the Eagles and that quarterback draw that they're fond of running. We'll be able to see and pimp on what he's going to do depending on how many receivers he puts out on the field. If he goes with three, goes with trips, or he goes with four, he may run that ball because he's trying to spread the defense. 4.49 left to go here in the first quarter. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. H back in motion is a tight end as Caldwell drops back to pass on third down. Caldwell looking for room, escapes one tackle, stiffs arms another, and picks up the first down before he's dropped by Nyree Quinnelly at the 24-yard line of Norfolk State. Dale Craig had an opportunity at him before the sticks but couldn't bring him down. As Caldwell with a nice stiff arm. Good coverage downfield, though, by the secondary with 422 left to go here in the first quarter. Caldwell over 50 yards rushing here today, 55 to be exact. And now, again, Central moving with a first down and 10 from the Norfolk State 24-yard line. At this juncture, I can say that draw is a signature play. The quarterback draw is a signature play for the Eagles. As the handoff will go to Totten rushing left side, and Totten... Actually rushing right side, gets to the 20-yard line. The pickup is four. Deshaun Middleton there for the Spartans. And that'll bring up a second down and six for the Eagles. Middleton, one of those big defensive no guards for Norfolk State. 6'2", 305 out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. As Caldwell looks to the sideline, 335 left to go in the first quarter. Central leading Norfolk State 3-0. As the Eagles come out, three wide receivers. In motion is McLeod, the H-back, as Caldwell waits the snap, and it's going to be another quarterback draw. And again, Caldwell will get near first down. Martin, he's, He loses the football, and it's going to be picked up by Norfolk State. Those ever-present, attentive Spartans, Ross. And Nyree Quinterly will come up with the forced fumble, and it was picked up, it looked like, by Bobby Price. We just talked about that Norfolk State secondary. Bobby Price, Bishop Sullivan Catholic, one of Hampton Rose's premier players when Coach Scott recruited him. Uh, we got one of those secondary that's just like anywhere, any other college in the state of Virginia. Everyone in the U.S. recruits west, east of the Mississippi, will recruit from Hampton Rose. 
First and ten for the Spartans as they line up. As the Spartans will come back. As the Spartans will come back at their 13-yard line. Carter in the shotgun drops back. Pass is going to be complete over the middle. Isaiah Winstead wide open for the first down. Pulls his way past the 25 to the 27-yard line. It'll be a first down for Norfolk State. Winstead, a fine receiver from Richmond. One of those developmental projects for Coach. Latrell likes to coach him, who was a former tight end. He likes to keep his hands on him himself. The Spartans come back to the line of scrimmage. The RPOs have worked uh, here well for Norfolk State. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As another quick pass to Marcus Taylor. Taylor dancing at the line of scrimmage and dances his way into about three tacklers for North Carolina Central. Leading the way is Brandon Bailey. Also there is Carl Isaac. One thing about the maturity of Taylor that I like, he really wanted to see how his interference or or his blockers were going to line up. And that's why that's what he was doing. He was dancing. He was trying to make sure that the blocks were set up well. That gave the defense of the Eagles to get in some time to come and pick him up. A timeout will be taken here on the field. The 30-second timeout is Norfolk State with 2.14 left to go here in the first quarter, trailing 3-0. And the offense just hasn't gotten into a rhythm here early, but they've looked okay over this last couple plays as they move the ball through the air well tonight. Four of seven for Juwan Carter. He has 41 yards here today as long as a 14. He has a completion to Winstead, Brent, and to Taylor. So, again, this is uh, what we'd like to see from Norfolk State. They move the ball methodically, then they get a chunk play down the field. And, you know, Winstead is a – has to be one of the conference's top receivers. He runs great patterns. He's sure-handed. And once an offset is able to get him out in the open, get him on a one-on-one or in a double team and get the ball to him, we can see some great things. As, it, again, Quintrell Chung and Nairi Quinley come up with the strip, and Bobby Price picks it up uh, on that forced fumble. We see that here on the end as Savage comes back. He picks up the first down on the ground. He runs hard out past the 40-yard line. And the Spartans are moving the ball on the ground. That's their first first down on the ground. So the ball will be spotted at the 40-yard line with two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Savage, of course, is averaging about 4.4 yards per carry. Solid stats for a running back if you want one. As a matter of fact, Ross, Gail Sears is average 4.4 points a carry. Three wide receivers in the formation, two split to the far side, one to the near for Carter. Carter. Play action. It looks for a one. The ball's going to be thrown behind him. Nearly intercepted. Ball was in the hands of the defensive back on that side. That's Marcus Martin. And Martin had the ball in his hands, but just couldn't pull it down. Awana was open there on the slant. Yes, he was. That was a throw of maturity. Had he put that ball a yard out in front of him, it would have been, as the old guys used to say, Katie by the door. He had a clear playing field to take that in. It'll be second down and 10 for the Spartans. Moving from right to left on your radio dial, 137 left to go here in the first quarter. As Carter sends four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side. As, again, Carter will keep. Pass is going to be incomplete. Again, on the coverage was Marcus Martin. And Martin just set on that route by Taylor. It'll bring up a third down and 10. Still time for the Spartan offense to find their timing. They're working on that right now. Carter's getting a little bit more uh, uh, time to throw the ball and, and watch his receivers complete their patterns. Four for nine for Carter here in the early going. 133 left to go here in this first quarter. It's the third down and 10 for the Spartans. As Central with three down linemen. Sees Carter drop back to pass. Blitz come. Carter steps up in the pocket. Has a blocker in front of lowers his shoulder. Gets near the first down marker, but he'll be about a yard shy. And that'll bring up a fourth down for Norfolk State. On the stop is Marcus Martin from his cornerback spot. And we'll see the punting unit in Taylor Godey. But that was a productive series for Norfolk State. And one more yard, and we would have had a first down. I think Pootie's card is settling down, and the, and the offense is getting into its rhythm. As Godey stands at his own 35-yard line, E.J. Hicks at his 10. As the punt is going to be blocked. It's going to be blocked and on the run. Let's see who picks it up. And North Carolina Central will pick it up inside the 15. 
the block was by Randy and Awanyu, and the Central will have it deep inside Norfolk State territory at the 10-yard line. And it was recovered by the Eagles, number 99, I think that was his number. He slid at least 10 yards. Yeah, so the Spartans. Chuck Manning, a freshman, Riverside High School out of Durham. The Spartans surrendered their first block punt of the year. And we'll see the offense for North Carolina Central come out with the first down and goal from the 10-yard line. The second time Central has been inside Norfolk State's red zone here today. Caldwell in the shotgun, two wide receivers to the far side. And Moten, Martian, motion is Martin. Caldwell will keep, and Caldwell's going to get him taken down in the backfield. Otto will get the initial hit, and he was finished off by Hall for Norfolk State. A loss of three for the Spartans on first down. Excuse me, loss of three for the Eagles on first down. And that will bring up a second down and goal from the 13-yard line. Good penetration there by MKA for the Spartans. And we'll see Caldwell come back with a second down and goal from the 13-yard line. Bunch formation to the top as Caldwell will play action. Boots out in the flat pass. Going to be complete to the tight end. He bounces off a tackle, gets inside the 10 to the five-yard line, and that class was complete to McLeod. Bobby Price and Aaron Chandler Jr. there on the stop. It'll bring up a third down and goal from the five when we come back from this timeout. That will end the first quarter. Norfolk State trails three to nothing as we move to the second quarter to North Carolina Central. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Today might be the day I drop out of school but you might be able to stop me. With United Way, you could tutor me, be my mentor, or volunteer to just read with me. There are tons of ways people like you can help kids like me. One go. Hello and welcome back to MEAC Football right here on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Norfolk State trailing North Carolina Central as we move into the start of the second quarter. It's going to be a third down and goal for North Carolina Central from the Norfolk State five-yard line. As we are underway here as the teams flip sides, the rain comes down just a little bit harder. Caldwell in the shotgun. Titan moves out and flares out now comes back. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Spartans showing man coverage on the outside. Actually, a little zone look for the Spartans as Caldwell waits the snap. Gets it, and he's going to take off. Caldwell looks inside, gets to the end zone, and he gets in, and he will get touchdown. the first touchdown of the ball game. 14-54 left to go here in the second quarter, and Central has scored the first 10 points of the ball game, and their offense is looking pretty solid here to start this ball game. Well, Ross, you and I did a little bit of scouting, too. You and I could have practically predicted that he was going to take that draw on that play. He's been very successful with him most of the game. And Caldwell leads the team in rushing now. He has 65 yards on the day with that touchdown as the extra point. The high snap. That was high. And the snapper... Schleckler and Pecora was on a different page. Pecora tried to throw the ball away, and it's going to end up in a failed extra point. 9-0 is your score. 15 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Norfolk State trailing 9-0 to Central on ESPN3. Connecting 20 million members to a deeper family story. Order your kit at Ancestry.com. Edu slash quality. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as North Carolina Central leads Norfolk State by a score of 9-0 here with 14.54 left in the second quarter. As we'll see Central kick off for the third time today, here is Jonathan DeLuca. We'll send Mike Marcus Taylor back inside his own five-yard line, awaiting the kickoff as the kick is high. And this one will be short. Taylor will see Stuart Anderson Jr. take it from the 10-yard line. Anderson drives the left side, gets to the 25-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive. And again, 
for Norfolk State just getting to a place where offensively they can find some consistency under sophomore quarterback Jawan Carter as the offense back onto the field. They've done some good things here. Four of nine for 41 yards here passing. Jawan Carter has three carries for 13 yards. Aaron Savage with two carries for 13 yards on the day as Savage back in the backfield for the Spartans. Three wide outs as Carter waits the snap two to the near side, one to the far as the handoff goes to Savage. Savage breaks across the left side, picks up three yards on first down. It'll bring up a second down and seven. And again, staying ahead of schedule is going to be key for Norfolk State, uh, making it a second down and seven. So you can get to a third down and three so you can have better opportunities at those four, third down situations. So, Ross, I'm, I'm wondering, you've been with them on the road a little bit this year. Are we a second-half team? You know, I, the guys seem to be just anxious at this point. And, again, you just have to see coming off of that time. I might have a little bit of rust. But, again, uh, you know, if you say we started off well in the past couple games, as Carter steps up in the pocket and he's going to get taken down. On the sack for North Carolina Central's number 46, Savon Lochtes. And that'll bring up a third down and real long for Dorfick State now. And again, uh, that's the second sack in the first half for North Carolina Central, a team that has not gotten a lot of pressure on the quarterback to start this year. And again, they've given up some yardage. They've done a good job here in the first half. Yeah. Uh, putting pressure on Norfolk State offensively. And one of those guys putting the pressure on is Darius Rorster. He's from Chesapeake, and he actually played at Deep Creek. So he's uh, a homeboy that's giving us a little tough time, as it were. Third down and 13 as Hewlett flares out in motion to the near side. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far as Carter drops back. It's going to be a screen, and it's going to be complete to Hewlett. Actually, to Brent. Brent shakes free of one tackle. Got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. And some pushing and shoving after the play. That'll bring up fourth down, and the Spartans will punt. But I like that play call. That screen was called in the middle. We had a blitz on the side nearest to you, Ross, or not side nearest to us. We picked the blitz up, was able to get the ball off to Brent and uh, get back to the line of shoot. Didn't quite get the fourth down. I apologize. That was Marcus Taylor on the reception, and we'll see Taylor Gody out. Again, E.J. Hicks back deep. Credit the defensive play for North Carolina Central as Gody will get this punt away. It's a low spinner that will take a nice bounce as Hicks will watch it bounce inside the 20, and it's gaining some steam down to the 16-yard line. So the Spartans flip the field here. Good job of uh, protecting and getting to this media timeout with 12.37 left to go in the second quarter, trailing 9-0 to North Carolina Central. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3. Only on Showtime. Start your free trial. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as Norfolk State trails North Carolina Central 9-0 here. 12.37 left to go here in the second quarter. And we'll see Chauncey Caldwell back onto the field. He's... Scored a touchdown, and he's led his offense well here. He leads him in rushing as it's going to be a handoff to Totten, and Totten will go right side. Picks up about five yards on first down, but there's a flag thrown right in the area of a hold. North Carolina Central, the most penalized team in the conference, and we'll see what the first flag of the day is here, just starting in the second quarter. You know, our, our Coach Matt Dawson, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina, met with his uh, his unit for several minutes during that timeout, and he's trying to get these guys on task. It was a hold. Couldn't get who the number was on as Deshaun Dixon is down on the ground holding his left arm. Dixon, uh, the sophomore who's played well, gets up on his own, and he'll hustle off to the sideline. Dixon, a sophomore, will be replaced by Ricky Thomas, Jr., who started off this year, a transfer from Nevada. He'll get into the game. He has the ability to make some plays behind the line of scrimmage. Hopefully everything's all right with Deshaun Dixon here as Central will run their first down play inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. Caldwell with Titan in the backfield. Sends Titan to his left as it's going to be a Caldwell keeping the ball, and he's going to throw the ball away. I don't know if it got... Back to the line of scrimmage, but there was a receiver in the area. Nice job there by Chavis coming in. Also there was Karan Speller. Dawson readjusted their assignments. He didn't have anywhere to go with that draw on that play. Very heady job by our coach, defensive coordinator Matt Dawson, 
getting his unit together and keeping an eye on Caldwell, not allowing him to pick up that first down with that draw. Central will have a second down and 18 from their own eight-yard line. As the Spartans will see Chavis Blitz. Pass is going to be nearly intercepted. Jumping the route nicely was Bobby Price as the pass was intended for E.J. Hicks. Price came over the top there. And again, Caldwell sort of sort of uh, telegraphed that one. And the Spartans nearly came up with another big play. Old Dominion got Blake LaRussa. We got Bobby Price. Price is one of the best cornerbacks, I mean, safeties in the, in the, in the country. He'll only get better. He's really on that ball. 12-12 left to go here in the second quarter. 9-0 is your score. Nigel Chavis has been standing up this whole possession, and Chavis will... Forced the pitch to Totten. Totten over the left side, looking for room to run. Picks up solid yardage near the first down marker, but he won't get there. He'll be about three yards shy. He gets out to the 24-yard line, and that will bring up a punting situation for the Eagles. Let's see what they decide to do as Nyree Quinterly gets up slowly. And as you mentioned earlier, Ross, the Spartans will bend, but they won't break. That was an excellent example of that. As and it does look like the Eagles are about to punt. They will punt, and Quinterly won't get to the sideline. Actually, he will jog off to the sideline. Hopefully everything's all right with him. As we see Vaccaro come out to punt back deep is Marcus Taylor. Rain starting to fall here a little heavier at Dick Price Stadium as Vaccaro will get the punt away. It's short and will bounce in favor of North Carolina Central, the Spartans will start with their best field position of the day at their own 34-yard line. And we'll keep uh, things going here. The Spartans trailing 9-0. And again, cracking the code of this North Carolina Central defense is going to be huge for this drive for Norfolk State as the Spartans yet to find their footing here on the offensive side of the football on the very sloppy day to start this ball game. Homecoming 2018 for Norfolk State. As Carter will have Savage in the backfield with him, two wide receivers to the near side. Winstead, the lone receiver to the far side. At H-back will be the tight end, Anthony Williams. Carter in the pistol. Savage behind him. As the handoff will go to Savage in between the tackles. Bounces off a tackler. Draws forward. Might have gotten a yard. Might have gotten to the 35, but not much more. And again, if you read the press clippings, if you're North Carolina Central, they struggle to stop the run. They've done a good job here stopping the run to start this ball game. They certainly have, and they seem to have sat down uh, at, when they got back from Howard, looked at some film from Norfolk State, picked up on Brent, picked up on Savage, checked their tendencies out. But I'm sure the Spartans have something in their bag. Second down and nine for Norfolk State. Carter in the shotgun, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. You have Savage to the right of Carter. As Carter will roll right, pass is going to be complete to Marcus Taylor. And the flat Taylor looks like he'll pick up enough for the first down out to the 47-yard line. And the Spartans will move the chains here with the first down. And Norfolk State with 10.38 left to go here in the second quarter has something going here offensively. Uh, the stadium announcer, Jackie Bo, said that Marcus Taylor to the rescue. And that's pretty much his role on that team. Good pattern, picked up the yardage that they need. And then got out of bounds. Congratulations to Marcus Taylor as he's down in third place all by himself in receptions. As the handoff goes to Savage. Savage backs his way in to North Carolina Central Territory. Picks up about four on the play. That'll make it a second down and a six for Norfolk State here. Clock now under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. And, you know, Savage likes to run between tackles. That's good. You're running north and south. You're not picking up 20 yards going to the sidelines. Savage stays in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the far side. Winstead to the near side. Carter waits the snap. Quick pitch into the hands of Taylor. He tries to bounce it outside. Taylor gets pushed down out of bounds. That should be a flag, and it will be. As Taylor was out of bounds, and he was pushed even further out of bounds. Not a very smart play there by the North Carolina Central defensive. And actually, he would have cut back inside, but he saw that pursuit coming, so he stayed on the hips 
uh, the blocker or his interference. And when he ran out of sight, that pursuit was the one that got hit with that tackle, probably disturbed that they didn't get at him. Also, there was a good job by Norfolk State in making sure they kept their composure after Taylor bounced up on the sideline and get off the sideline and get back to the huddle. And, you know, I, I, Deontay Fair, the guilty party for North Carolina Central. The Spartans in best in their best field position to date. At, excuse me, today <laughs> at the 34-yard line. It'll be a first down and 10 for the Spartans. Hewlett in the backfield with Carter. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Carter awaits the snap. Drops back. Steps up in the pocket. Picks up around five on first down. He'll have a second down and five. Pootie Carter once again taking the ball up the gap, doing a good job of being patient, reading the secondary, checking off his receivers, had a lane open. He picked up five yards for us, Ross. They actually give him credit for four to the 30-yard line. That'll bring up a second down and six. You also have to credit the offensive line. They've given up a couple of sacks here today. They've done a good job of they did a good job of keeping them upright there mm -hmm. as Carter awaits the snap. The time he'll hand it off to Hewlett. Hewlett gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. And gang tackling has been the name of the game for North Carolina Central to start this ball game. Kiaku there. Also Brandon Bailey there for North Carolina Central. That'll bring up a third down and we'll say seven. Time for Lindell to step up and see what we can do. Get the ball to Wednesday and we should be okay. Isaiah is really good in these third down situations for Norfolk State. 8.21 left to go here in the second quarter. Brent actually... Staying in the backfield is Hewlett. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side as Carter stays in the shotgun. Central showing blitz. Blitz comes. Carter moves away from it and throws it or nearly away and lobbed it up for Awana, and that will bring up fourth down. The pressure came off the edge for North Carolina Central. But I was amazed that Carter could get that ball off, Ross. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation, and the Spartans will keep their offense on the field. Again, Jerome Foster came off the edge and beat the block of Hewlett. And we'll have a fourth down and seven. Norfolk State 0 for 1 today on fourth down. Eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. Carter with Savage to his right. Drops back to pass with time. Carter steps up in the pocket, and he has a room to... A uh, line to the first down, lowers his shoulder, and he won't get there again. You know, one thing about the maturity of that young man is that he didn't really want to run the ball, but he had no choice. He pulled it in and took it. And he's down on the sideline as he took a hit. Trying to angle towards the far sideline, and he bounces up. Good to see him get up, but again, another turnover on downs for. He's still hurting a little bit, Ross. I got you as Norfolk State with 7.53 left to go here in the second quarter. Again, struggling, keeping action going, keeping their the drives going here today. Get inside the 30, and they get down to the 26-yard line, but not much further, and we'll see the offense of North Carolina Central come back out. Well, I think we have halftime coming up. They'll go inside, and they'll make some adjustments. And I think when they come back out, we'll see an entirely different team. I think the defense is going to hold. They're focusing on the right arm of Jerron Carter. And near the right wrist. Let's see if it's back up or warm up. With 7.53 left to go here in the second quarter, Caldwell drops back to pass, looking downfield. Looking for his man. Pass is going to be in the hands of his receiver. Let's see if he was in bounds. Gee. They're going to say that he was inside Norfolk State territory. Nike Martin comes up with the reception over the coverage of JT Wahi. Nairi Quinterly was also there uh, to make sure he got out of bounds. And one play centrals into Norfolk State territory. I thought he caught that ball in the white, Ross. Three wide receivers in the formation. Two to the near side. One to the far as Totten goes in motion. Caldwell will keep it, and he's going to get hit in the backfield. Nigel Chavis there. Also, a host of other Spartans come up to make the stop. It's going to be a tackle for loss at the 49-yard line as Chavis did a good job of wrapping up Caldwell, a bigger quarterback, and knocking him down for a loss of one. 
Good job out of North State defense. Spartans on the play. 7-14 left to go here in the second quarter. Caldwell will look back to the sideline. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. As Caldwell has Totten in the backfield. And it's going to be a quarterback keeper for Caldwell. Not much doing there as he gets past the original line of scrimmage, gets to the 46-yard line. It'll bring up a third down, and we'll say seven for the Eagles. Caldwell looking at the responsibility of the North State linebackers. He's trying to read their slants, and if it's proper, if it's to the outside, he's going to take it up the, up the gap there. If they stay in position, he's going to stay in the lane and try to throw the ball. Central will look towards the sideline. They have 18 seconds on the play clock. As Caldwell will now turn, turn towards the line of scrimmage. He sends three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Caldwell drops back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Pass is going to be complete. A drag route to Nike Martin. Martin doesn't get much. He'll be taken down by Quintrell Chung after a pickup of two on the drag route. And that will bring up a fourth down situation. And the Eagles will send out their punting unit quickly, liking the way their defense is playing right now with the fourth down and five inside of Norfolk State territory at the Norfolk State 43. And we'll see John Picaro come back to punt for North Carolina Central. And the Spartans will play this one safely here as Picaro pulls down the kick as the Punt is going to go out of bounds and around the 15-yard line, and a late flag is thrown. And it was really late as Dixon ran into the leg of the kicker. But oh, my stars. The, the play was almost yeah. over. I don't even think he came in and ran near the kicker. Yeah, he was close. Might have touched him huh. a little bit on the bounce. Uh-huh. And see if it was an acting job or if it is indeed a penalty. Let's see what the call is going to be. If it is five yards, it'll be a first down for North Carolina Central. Uh, Central with a drama school doing well down there, huh? As you can hear from the crowd, Ross, on the external mic, <laughs> we're not the only ones that disagree with that call. And Dixon got hit with the penalty. It'll be a first down for... North Carolina Central at the Norfolk State 38-yard line. So the Eagles get a break on the penalty on Deshaun Dixon, and it'll be a first down for Caldwell. He sends Titan in motion. As Caldwell will hand it off to Titan running right side, and he explodes forward, gets four yards on the play inside the 35 down to the 34-yard line. Before he's brought down in on the stop is Speller, who we'll have an interview with at halftime with 519 left to go in the second quarter. Norfolk State scoreless in their last six quarters. Here moving back to that FAMU football game, trailing 9-0 to Central here. As the Eagles have a second down and six. Caldwell drops back to pass. They're looking for a screen. The ball's gonna be incomplete. Nike Martin had it in his hands. He probably didn't want to catch it as Quintrell Chung was right there curling back and probably wouldn't have been a good day for Nike Martin. No, he didn't want that. He batted the ball down. He saw Nike back there. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make a business decision with 4.59 left to go here in the second quarter. I like Caldwell that. will have a third down and six with three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Totten stays in the backfield. You call that a business decision. I like that, Ross. As Caldwell awaits the snap, claps his hands, drops back to pass, pressure coming, and the pass is going to be complete out to Titan in the flat. He has one man to beat, and he picks up the first down as Chung pulls him down after he picks up around 11 on the play inside the 25 to the 24, and Central keeps the sticks moving out of the backfield with the man coverage there with Chung and Totten. Chung did a good job of recovering on that play and stopping it at the time we needed the most. Spartans backs not quite up against the wall. Again, this drive aided by running into the kicker penalty as Caldwell will keep it. 
on an option read. He's tackled nicely by Tyree Givers Wilson after pickup of two inside again the 25 down to around the 23. Caldwell doesn't appear to be taking a good uh, care of that ball when he's running with the ball. We're going to get a fumble or it's going to get knocked out of his hands sooner or later. Sooner, I hope. Caldwell with 70 yards rushing today on 10 carries as he awaits the snap on the second down and eight. Drops back to pass. Caldwell looking to the end zone. Has a man. Pass is going to be incomplete. And then we have another late flag. They want to call pass and a fringe. I think he had North State's defensive back. Who was that? Price back there? Had Price turned around, he may not have been charged with that potential penalty. And the pass was intended by Deshaun, to Deshaun Stevens. We have a flag thrown. And it looks like it's going to be pass interference or holding. Maybe it depends on when the flag was thrown. I hope it's holding on, all, on the offense, particularly at the receiver position. So it's a spot foul, and it will be a first down and goal for North Carolina Central inside the 10-yard line at the 8. And Caldwell, who hasn't thrown for a touchdown, through three touchdowns last week, has again seen this drive aided out by penalties, the most penalized team in the conference being aided by defensive penalties by Norfolk State. As a reversal of fortune, as it were. Caldwell will come back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the near to the far side. One in motion. That's Martin as Caldwell will keep it. Rushes left side. He gets hit by Nigel Chavis. Nearly loses the football as he picks up a yard down to the seven yard line. It'll be a second down and goal for the seven from the seven for North Carolina Central. The Spartans still need to be tacking that ball. He's going to lose that ball. He's very careless with it when he kind of brings it down to try to execute that quarterback draw. 326 left to go here in the second quarter. Second down and goal for Central from the seven yard line. Caldwell drops back to pass. Looking into the corner of the end zone. Pass is going to be nearly intercepted by Bobby Price. As again, he was looking for Deshaun Stevens. It goes through Price's hands and it will bring up a third down and goal for Central. And where we saw a quarterback keeper on the last uh, possession of where Central ran it in for a touchdown. We have to make sure you spot the quarterback on this third down and seven. That was the same pass play, or at least the same pattern, going to the flags by the wide receiver for North, uh, North Carolina Central. Price, that time, turned around, turned his head around when he saw the eyes or the irises of the receiver open up. That time, he didn't get a call for an interference right on top of the play. Shut down corner. 314 Safety. left to go here in the second quarter, and Granville Eastman will trot on to the field to take a timeout. The first timeout taken by North Carolina Central. It's going to be a media timeout. When we come back, a third down and seven for Central from the seven-yard line of Norfolk State, leading 9 nothing. You're watching Miak Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. It's everything we ever imagined, and then some. North Carolina Central leading Norfolk State 9-0 here with 3.14 left to go in the, the second quarter. Central will have a third down and goal from the seven-yard line. Caldwell, who's been really good here for Central in the first half, will send two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Totten in motion out of the backfield. Caldwell is going to swing it out to Totten. Totten tries to make a man miss, and he can't do it at the five-yard line as he gets stood up. Nice job coming and corralling Totten. JT, why he was there, and he gets to the four-yard line, but not much more. And we'll see the field goal unit come out for North Carolina Central. And that was a big stop there for Norfolk State. Very big stop, Ross. You know, Norfolk State is trying to get the uh, the defense, is trying to get the offense time to get their act together. You know that this def uh, offense of uh, Scott could score 21 points in, in a half. Just a matter of the young freshman settling down and get his timing right. Lippy one for one today on field goals. Well, this one from... The 11-yard line, it's a 21-yard field goal attempt. That's true, and the Spartans now trail 12-0 with 2.31 left to go here in the second quarter, and we'll see uh, what the Spartans offensively can do with a slightly injured uh, 
quarterback in Jawan Carter as he came off the field slowly on the last possession. He has wrapped his wrist today with black tape after that possession. And we'll see how he throws the football. That was his right wrist that he fell on on the sideline. The training staff uh, taped him up, and he looks to be ready to go here when the Spartans get the football. As again, we'll see Jonathan DeLuca to kick off for the Eagles. And a big return would be nice here with 2.31 left to go in the second quarter. Let's see if DeLuca is going to kick the ball away from Taylor. Because if he touches it, we got a chance to go in the end half with a score. As DeLuca gets this one away, and Taylor will get the opportunity to run it back. It's just a short kick at the 11-yard line. Taylor looking for a block. Gets one. Still looking for another one past the 30. Speeds out of bounds. And he's hit as he crosses the 35 to the 37. It'll be a first down for the Spartans. And two minutes, 24 seconds to go to put points on the board here in the second quarter. So go to your two-minute drill now. Good field position by Marcus Taylor. You know, you, you, can, you can plan some things when you have a young man who is a specialty team player like him. As Carter will come out in the shotgun. Brent in the backfield now for Norfolk State. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Carter drops back to pass. Looking downfield, throws the ball away, cover two, look there. Devontae Reynolds was in the area with Chuma Awana. Also was Marcus Martin underneath for North Carolina Central. And they played the short routes well for uh, on the defensive side for North Carolina Central. They're doing a good job of that, taking away those short routes. So you take your tight end or you take your interior, um, your wingman, maybe send them on a slant, Ross. Let's see if that, that's part of our game plan. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Carter. Again, Brent in the backfield. Williams, the tight end, lined up to the near side. The Spartans trail 12-0. As Carter drops back to pass, pass is going to be complete to Winstead. Winstead, again, makes someone miss. Picks up the first down near midfield as he's pushed out of bounds. And again, the individual effort there by Winstead makes a play. And the Spartans have a first down at the 50-yard line. With the clock moving at 2 minutes and 10 seconds to go. And the Spartans will move. Uh, quickly, as the ball will be spotted at the Norfolk State 49-yard line. West, uh, Wednesday at a sophomore, 6'3", 205 from Richmond, Virginia. As Cameron Brent gets the carry, he spins out of a tackle inside of North Carolina Central Territory down to the 44-yard line. Brent coming off a career high, 42 yards versus FAMU. Picks up seven on first down, and again, the Spartans will keep the offense Moving quickly in their two minute with 135 left to go. Again, the handoff goes to Brent in between the tackles. Brent gets the first down as he's taken down by his neck with 132 left to go here in the second quarter. Brent with some tough yardage up the gap right between the tackles. That's where we want the ball. We want to go north and south at this juncture in the game. Carter will send two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. And again, the handoff will go to Brent. Brent still dragging. Tacklers with two timeouts. The Spartans still have two timeouts as the clock moves with 1.12 left to go here in the second quarter. And the Spartans will sub here. Taking time off the clock as Carter will see Central back up on the defensive end. Carter looks off for Awana. Awana gets his first catch, and he's nailed as he catches the ball inside the 35 down to the 33. And again, the Spartans have two timeouts. As the clock moving with 45 seconds to go. Third down and four. Trailing 12 nothing. Under 40 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Three wide outs to the far side. Carter drops back to pass. Pressure coming in his face. Carter looking for a block, and he has to step out of bounds. He was looking for Winstead, and Winstead stopped in his route there, and he'll bring up a fourth down situation with 28 seconds to go here. In the second quarter. I think Winston was trying to decide, does he come back towards the quarterback or does he set up a block for the quarterback? Because he had some, Pooty had some room on that side for the carry. It'll bring up a fourth down and three. The yard line to make is the 30-yard line for Carter in this offense. As Carter saw pressure come in his face as soon as he caught the football. Off the shotgun snap as Taylor comes in motion to the near side. Carter awaiting the snap. Drops back to pass. 
Carter runs into trouble, loses the football. He picks it up. Actually, it's going to be still on the ground. It's going to be picked up by Anthony Williams, and the Spartans now 0 for 3 on fourth down with 20 seconds remaining here in the th second quarter. The football goes right back over to North Carolina Central to end the half. We're a young team. I'm going to still chalk this up to uh, homecoming jitters, Ross. And it looked like Co Cox did a good job of getting pressure on Jawan Carter, and the ball just popped out, and Carter had it down near the leg of Cox. Right, and when he spun around, it kind of spun right into the defensive player, lost his grip. As the ball was fumbled at the 40-yard line, so the ball couldn't be advanced with 20 seconds left to go in the second quarter. We'll see what North Carolina Central decides to do going into the break. They also have two timeouts remaining. They might be looking to get in field goal range. What is with this Spartan defense, I'm not so sure about that. At least we should be able to hold it, give our offense a chance to get our act together. It's only 12 nothing, So, you know, two touchdowns, we're back in the ball game. As Caldwell will take off. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Caldwell runs into his own man, gets out past the 45 to the 47-yard line. And Central with eight seconds to go. Looks like they will take this one. In it to halftime. 12 nothing will be your score. Moving into quarter number three. Norfolk State trails North Carolina Central at the break. We'll take a timeout. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Yeah. Got to be a real life superhero. And so did his dad. Twelve nothing is your score at the half here at Dick Price Stadium. North Carolina Central leading Norfolk State here at the break. Norfolk State uh, held to 115 yards of total offense, 72 through the air, only 43 on the ground. 174 from North Carolina Central, 97 on the ground, 77 through the air, led by Chauncey Caldwell, 77 yards passing, and also a touchdown on 76 yards on the first half to go on 12 carries so no big state trailing at the break 12 nothing when we come back we'll have a special conversation with uh, defensive lineman karan speller after this timeout you're listening and watching me at football on espn3 and the nsu sports network Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. We'll send it back to the studio now as Matt Mahalik has Karan Speller for a halftime interview. Thanks, Ross. As we continue along on the halftime show here on the NSU Sports Network and the MEAC Digital Network, we're joined today by our player guest, junior defensive lineman Chiron Speller, joins us here today. Chiron, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Well, uh, the team's had an off week since the uh, Florida A&M game a, a couple weeks to to try to you know, reset and get things right for the second half of the season. Uh, how did the team use the bye week to, to try to try to reset and refocus for the last part of the season? Well, the team basically, we used this bye week to uh, basically get our bodies back right, get our heads back focused on, on what really matters. And that's uh, basically get coming out here, not um, homecoming, um, having a good game against North Carolina Central. What would you say is, is kind of the, the mood of the team at this point? Um, coming off a, a game that obviously was there for the taking. Uh, we were on the, the short end of the stick there, but um, what would you say is the mood of the team heading into uh, this game against the Eagles? Uh, the mood of the team right now is very humble, but at the same time when, this, when the game starts, we're going to play like our hair is on fire. For uh, folks that uh, know a little bit about your story, uh, coming off an uh, injury last season that kept you out of the entire 2017 campaign, uh, how have things kind of progressed for you and your recovery from that uh, as you kind of get yourself uh, back in the swing of things here uh, for the Spartans? Well, things things have been it's, it's been shaky just to get the, the confidence back and uh and the confidence back in my knee, but ever since then I got my confidence back during, uh, throughout the games and uh, as you can see uh, each and every game I got better and better. As a, uh, a graduate of Kimsville High, a, a local product here out of uh, Virginia Beach, uh, you originally attended East Carolina for uh, a little while. Things didn't quite work out for you at ECU. Uh, what led you to to transfer and, and ultimately to to choose Norfolk State? How did it come to be that you're that you're in the green and gold now? Uh, well, I, I was born in North Carolina. And I grew up here, so basically I just wanted to be close to family and everything. Cause I was getting, uh, my mom came, 
every weekend in um, East Carolina to come see me, and that basically gave me like a like a home bug. So basically, I just didn't want to come back here and just be close to family. What was her reaction when you uh, told her that you were transferring back home? I guess she was she was pretty happy about that. Well, basically, she was just worried about the gas money. <laughs> <laughs> We won't let mom hear that part. But well, uh, there was uh, some more transition for you once you, you came to Norfolk State. Uh, you, you started off playing more of a, at linebacker mm -hmm. when you got here. Then uh, prior to last season, uh, moved to the defensive line. How did that move kind of kind of suit you and your abilities? Well, uh, it, it really didn't phase me too much because, you, as you can see, uh, when I was at Kemptonville, I played linebacker and I played defensive end. But mostly, I played defensive end most of my high school career. So being on the defensive line was basically like second nature. It was just a, it was just a home feeling. Obviously, it was a, a long rehab for you coming off of the knee injury last year. But um, how do you kind of cope with with that mentally, having that that year off and not being able to, to be in the game, and, and and of course having to deal with the injury itself? How, how have you kind of managed that from a, a mental standpoint? Uh, mentally, um, it, it, it tested it tested me a lot, but I had to understand that uh, God gives his, uh, his his worst battles to his own greatest soldiers. So at the end of the day, I had to make, I had to know what I had to recognize God's plan. At the end of the day. Well, Kyron, we were talking about it earlier. I, I know that you've come to be nicknamed over the years uh, Spaz. Tell us a little bit about uh, the the origin of that nickname and and sort of how you uh, how you exemplify that, how that plays out. Uh, basically, I have a quick I have a quick temper when I'm on the field. If I see if I see anybody slacking or somebody not giving their full effort, I give them my words of wisdom and see if that can I can encourage them to play better. And also, how my style of play is is that every time I'm on the field, I'm always I'm always like head on heels, like with my head on fire, just ready to go crazy. And that's exactly what they call me. They call me Spaz. Well, uh, hopefully uh, the the Miat quarterbacks will get to know a little bit more about uh, what that nickname is all about here as we we uh, finish out the season. Kyron, thanks for joining us here today on the uh, halftime show. Best of luck and continued success throughout the season. All right, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Once again, that's Kyron Speller joining us here today on the halftime show. We'll send it back. We're back here at Dick Price Stadium, homecoming 2018, Norfolk State Trails, North Carolina Central, 12-0. We'll recap the stats for you at the break. Norfolk State, 115 yards of total offense, 174 for North Carolina Central. Norfolk State in the first half, two penalties for 20 yards. North Carolina Central, two for 23. Uh, Norfolk State has held the ball 15 minutes and 48 seconds. And Central, 14 and 12. Big number for Norfolk State, 0 for 10 in between third downs and fourth down conversions. Central 3 of 8 on third downs, 3 of 4, and red zone chances. Norfolk State yet to get to the red zone. North Carolina Central leading 12 nothing here as we reach the near end of halftime. The Spartan Legion on the field performing here at halftime. When we come back, we'll have the start of the second half as Norfolk State trails North Carolina Central 12 nothing here at Homecoming. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. PS4. Hello, welcome back to Dick Bright Stadium. Your score 12 0 here as we continue along on the halftime show. We're almost ready to begin the start of the second half. North Carolina Central with the lead 12 0, and Chauncey Caldwell, we said, would have to be the difference for North Carolina Central, and he has been in the first half, leading them in rushing with over 75 yards, 77 to be exact. And again, this team goes as he goes. Uh, what he's been hurting the Spartans with, Ross, is that quarterback keeper to quarterback draw. Uh, once he finds any type of uh, coverage that, that does it, he doesn't like to see in the secondary, He's going to pull the ball back down and take it up to God. He's done that at least three on three occasions that we've noticed. And again, it's uh, the issue for Norfolk State. Just a couple big plays. Chunk plays have been the issue. They have to uh, secure that on defense. But offensively for Norfolk State, they have struggled to keep drives going again. 0 for 10 and between third down and fourth down conversions here today. But the snippets of success that we've seen is with the running of Fred and Savage in the running game. Um, if we could establish the running game once again, I think that's going to open us up uh, with the passing game. Isaiah Winstead has stepped in and stepped up, as well as um, uh, Maurice Taylor. As again, Norfolk State uh, in the first half, just 115 yards of total offense. Again, continue their struggles on the offensive side of the football since that FAMU football game and again 
uh, you, you have to credit the, the the defense for the job they've done. Uh, but again, the two the two sacks, the two sacks given up by uh, Norfolk State, something that we haven't seen in a while. And again, just not uh, not being able to click on the the passes down the field between Carter and his receivers, something we haven't seen all year. Right, you know, we still have a relatively young team, and it's a very dynamic team. They have some growing pains, but I think once these young men get their timing down, uh, particularly the relationship between the quarterbacks and the receivers, we can do some things. For the first time in years, we have had we have two good running backs in the backfield. We can go either way, actually three, and we have good depth at the quarterback position. Uh, Taylor is uh, Carter is coming along. He's done some good things. I've seen him make some mature decisions um, on the plays that we have seen, and perhaps this is the. It has to be the half that the Spartans have to turn things around in homecoming. Kennedy and Evans will be back deep to return the kick from Josh Nardone. The Spartans moving from left to right on your radio dial. North Carolina Central from right to left on your radio dial. Again, the Spartans trail twelve nothing as we get set. To start the third quarter. As Nardone puts total leather. And we're underway here in this third quarter. Nardone sends it through the end zone. And this drive for North Carolina Central and Chauncey Caldwell will start from the North Carolina Central 25-yard line. You know, one of the things that the Spartans do well, and they've been playing defense. Let's look at it. They've, they've held the Eagles to 12 points. So they can do a good job of keeping in there and letting the officer get on the board a couple of times. And maybe the defense may need to score for us once or twice, Ross. What do you think? Yeah, hopefully the offense can get things going as we look at the only other score from around the conference, South Carolina State leading Delaware State with 431 left in the third, 20-7 to seven in that ball game. As Caldwell comes back, empty set, three wide receivers to the near side, two to the far. As Titan comes in motion, the handoff will go to Titan rushing over the left side as he breaks the tackle of Quinterly and he's pushed out of bounds by JT Why He gap played there on first down for North Carolina Central out to the 49-yard line. That's the biggest run of the night for Titan, and it will be a first down for the Eagles at their own 49. Titan found that gap in the Spartans' 3-4 defense, took advantage of it, as Caldwell will keep it and he rushes this time right side and he's tripped up from behind nice job coming up and making the play by Dale Craig he might have gotten a yard on the play not much more than that and that'll make it a second down and 10 for North Carolina Central Dale Craig shooting the gap on that play doing a good job of wrapping the quarterback well not allowing him to pick up any additional yardage Caldwell drops back to pass this time. Looking over the middle, pass is going to be complete. But as soon as the ball was caught by Martin, he was dumped by JT Wahi. That'll bring up a third down and seven for North Carolina Central. Wahi did a good job. I think uh, Coach did a good job of getting the defense ready while they had a little uh, gap in play during the halftime. He's made some adjustments. As Central will change personnel, and so with Norfolk State. 13.40 left to go here in the third quarter. Four wideouts for Caldwell, two to either side. Tighten in the backfield as Caldwell drops back to pass. Looking down the middle of the field, pass is going to be nearly intercepted, dropping back in coverage. There was Nigel Chavis, and that's two that's been in his hands here today as the ball was intended up the scene for Deshaun Stevens, and out comes the bunting unit for North Carolina Central. Chavis right on top of things once again. 6'2", 230 from Richmond, Virginia, a junior. As we'll see Picaro standing at his own 38-yard line, awaiting the snap, gets it. We'll get the punt away. This one's high and short, and it will bounce out of bounds. It'll go out of bounds. Coffin corner will be marked out at the 12-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start their first drive. Of the third quarter, trailing 12 nothing with 13.25 left in the third quarter. You're listening to NSU Football and MEAC Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Every Sunday at no extra charge when you switch to DirecTV. More for your thing. That's our thing. Anything can happen on Saturday night.
Hello and welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 12 nothing is your score, Norfolk State. Trailing North Carolina Central, Juwan Carter. Leading his troops out for the first time here in the third quarter. He'll have Savage in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As Carter awaits the snap. Carter will hand it off to Savage, rushing over the left side. Big hole for Aaron. Aaron gets to the 20-yard line before he's stuck there. And a nice run on first down for the Spartans. Devontae Reynolds there on the stop for North Carolina Central. Good job by Justin Reed and Rod Caldwell opening that hole up for the young running back. And the Spartans will pick up the tempo here as Carter again will hand a quick patch, pass over the middle is going to be incomplete. As it was intended for Williams, Williams can hold on to it. It was picked up by Jaquel Taylor, but it will be ruled incomplete as Williams never had control of the football. Yes, and plus I think it took a quick bounce when she tried to trap on the ground. That was Williams, that is. And tried to sneak in another. Maybe he thought the Eagles are going to get another good or uh, a good call. And again, Williams, who's been uh, solid this year for the Spartans, had an opportunity there. Third down and two as Savage stays in the backfield. Carter sends three wide receivers in the near side, one to the far. Carter, quick drop. Pass is going to be knocked down to the line of scrimmage looking for a wanna. And that'll bring up fourth down. It seems like Ross, when the, the Spartans are trying to make something happen, uh, Carter's rushing his pay. He's trying to get off a quick play, trying to catch them on a the guard. The Eagles are a very quick team, a very finesse type team. Uh, they're going to play, uh, be added as a team. And he's going to have to just be patient and pick his marks. Goldie will get the punt off in this one. Not his best work as it takes a bounce and it will roll out of bounds inside of Central Territory at the 48. But field, good field position for North Carolina Central. And a timeout will be taken on the field. Central will have it leading 12 0. 1247 left to go in the third quarter on ESPN 3 and the NSU Sports Network. His dad. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 12-0 is your score. Central with the lead. They'll start this drive from their own 48-yard line. Ross Gordon joined by Glenn Mason and Norfolk State. We'll see the rain come down a little harder as Caldwell will hand it off to EJ Hicks. Hicks trapped in the backfield nicely. First man there was T Tyree Givers-Wilson. Deshaun Dixon will clean him up. A loss of about five on the plate. Nice job there of, uh, of setting the edge by Deshaun Dixon. Been waiting to hear from Tyree Givers Wilson and uh, Deshaun. As the Spartans will change up their defensive personnel. Of course, as, I, I hope it was a better circumstance. Sorry, Ross. As we look at, uh, again, Deshaun Middleton, he and Tavian Blackwell will. Switch off today as Caldwell drops back to pass. Pressure coming. And the pass is nearly caught, but Totten can't bring it up as Caldwell had to get it out of his hands quickly as Ricky Thomas was coming in on the backside of Caldwell. Now, that's where I like to see the Spartan defense play, Ross. Everybody was in their assignments. Everybody was ready to make a play. And that's one of the advantages that we have with this uh, defense the Spartans are setting. They're making another adjustment, another substitution, number 99 is in the game for Norfolk State now. As Caldwell will come out. Three wide receivers in the formation. Two splits to the near side, one to the far. Caldwell drops back to pass. Pressure comes. Pass is going to be... He's not going to get it pass off, and he's going to be hitting the backfield. Dale Craig there. Also there for the Spartans is Hall, and that backs Central up to their own 30-yard line, and that will force another punt for North Carolina Central. Great defense there and pressure by the front seven. Lineman, defensive lineman, Tamian Blackwell came in there and tied up a couple of the Eagle offenses, uh, offensive linemen. That gave the linebackers of North State to get in there, put the pressure on the quarterback, make the tackle. Out comes the punting unit again, and this one's going to be short, and it's going to take a bounce, and Spartans will back away from it. Great field position for Norfolk State at the 34-yard line, and the offense back onto the field with 11:21 left to go here in the third quarter. And again, it will be good to see the offense get their 
uh, footing here, trailing by 12. Yes, Ross, we need a drive right now. If nothing else, to keep the defense off the field for a little while, give them a chance to get their legs back under them and keep doing the great job that they've done most of this game. 12 nothing, 11-21 remaining in this period. Carter on the center. Carter will be in the shotgun, four wide outs in the formation, two split to either side. Hewlett in the backfield, and Hewlett will get the carry over the right side. Big hole for Hewlett. He drags Tacklers, pull the first down. He gets hit past the 45-yard line to the 46. Big run there, and the Spartans will move it. Depth in the Spartans' backfield once again. Hewlett, we got three backs. And probably got another one in the hole. As the Spartans now will move the football with 11 minutes to go in the third quarter, trailing 12-0, looking for their first points of the day. They need a good sustained drive right here, Ross. As Carter will come out, three wide receivers to the far side. Hewlett to his right. Carter awaits the snap. Gets it, drops back to pass with time. Steps to the right, looking downfield, lobs it up for Marcus Taylor. Taylor open, he pulls it in inside of the 30-yard line, and they're going to say he made the catch to see if he established himself back inbounds. They and it will be a first without. down. It will be a first down as the hat came off, which normally means that the receiver went out of bounds, but I guess he established himself. The biggest pass completion of the day for the Spartans as Taylor just got behind the defense, and the Spartans will have a first down and 10 at the North Carolina Central 26-yard line. Taylor, one of the fastest Spartans on the team, found those hash marks on the right side and stayed along. It's a first down. Hewlett stays in the backfield. Carter has him to his right. He hands it off to Hewlett. Hewlett rushes left. Escapes one tackle, spins his way inside the 25 down to the 22-yard line before he's taken down. And the Spartans now starting to uh, create some traction on the offensive end. This is the momentum that we wanted them to pick up. Keep the defense on the sideline for a little while. Stay on the field, the offense that is, and get your timing set and put some points on the board. 28 yards on that pitch and catch from Carter to Marcus Taylor which set him up for this first down and 10. It's a second down and six now after the four-yard run by Hewlett. Ten on the play clock, 9.42 left to go in the third quarter. It's Carter, play action, looking over the middle pass is going to be intercepted. As Carter was looking for Chuma Wanna, stepping up and making the play is Jaquel Taylor, and that will give the football back to North Carolina Central. Taylor doing a good job for the Eagles right on top of things. As you know, the defensive coordinator, well, the, the coach for um, North Carolina Central is a defensive specialist. Had his players in the right position, knocked off the state office game. For Carter, that's his first interception today. The first turnover of the night for the Spartans. And this will give Central the football back inside their own 10-yard line with 9.35 left to go here in the the third quarter, Jaquel Taylor with his first interception of the year. And Caldwell will come out, two wide receivers to the near side, Totten in the backfield. Spartans with their base look as the man comes in motion as Totten gets the handoff. He'll rush right side, not much doing there as Blackwell stands at the line of scrimmage for no gain. He was corralled after that by Hall. And a host of others for Norfolk State, including Dale Craig. It'll be second down and 10 for the Eagles. The interior of North State defensive line holding things together there for the Spartans, trying to give the offense some time to make some adjustments. As Caldwell will send two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As Caldwell will keep it, and pass is going to be wide open over the middle of the field. He was wide open as McLeod, and it's a foot race. Chandler on his way trying to catch him. Can he do it? McLeod will get into the end zone for the score. Wide open. The Spartans just left McLeod up the seam, and McLeod will take it in for the score, and now it's an 18 nothing ball game in favor of the Eagles. One of the few occasions that you'll see Norfolk State taking advantage of on the defensive game. They caught the right defense at the wrong time for the Spartans, and great play. Tied in with the ball. On to attempt the extra point is Adam Lippy, as that was a 93-yard reception for McLeod. That's his third touchdown of the year as Lippy gets the kick up 
and it's through the Spartans now trail 19 to 0 850 left to go here in the third quarter we'll take a timeout Norfolk State trailing 19 0 on ESPN 3 and the NSU Sports Network Nineteen nothing is your score after Chauncey Caldwell completed the pass to Sherman McLeod for ninety-three yards and he had to score as the Spartans bit up on the play action and McLeod found himself wide open for the score as he took it at ninety-three yards as we get set for the kickoff. And again we see Jonathan DeLuca come out for the Eagles to get this one away. He gets it off. It's a low line drive that Taylor will take from the five yard line. He's had some big returns here today. He runs right, looking for a hole, bounces it outside, and the flag will be thrown. Still on his feet as he gets out past the 30. He's taken down out of bounds at the 37 yard line, but a flag is thrown at the 18 yard line in the area of a hole. You know, one thing about it though, uh, Taylor will always give you an opportunity to uh, uh, obtain some free good position on the field and we have two flags on the play around the 30 yard line maybe a offsides against North Carolina Central and then we have something in the area of a hold which should offset the officials discuss it and we'll see what the what the conclusion of the play Rory Bernard is our referee and we'll hear from him now. There are two fouls on the play. One against each team. Offsides. Chicky team. Number 44. Personal foul. Target. Return team. Number 56. Those fouls offset. We will re-kick. Number 56 for Dolphin State. And just run the for the remainder of the contest. And that's tough there. It's Marquise Hall has been called for targeting and he will have to leave the field and won't be available until the second half of next week's ball game down in Savannah and Marquise Hall was playing a, a little bit in the uh, regular package there on defense in the 3-4 at the inside linebacker, so that's a big loss for the Spartans. Yes. And hopefully, and hopefully everything will be uh, settled after this as they'll re-kick after the two penalties, the most important one on Marquise Hall for targeting as he exits the field. And again, he'll have to sit out the first half of next week's ball game against Savannah State as we'll do it again. Kick is away by DeLuca and it will be taken by Taylor Taylor running left side looks for a hole gets stripped up as he makes it to the 20 yard line good open field tackle there by number 35 for North Carolina Central that's Zach Simmons also Patrick Connor there for the Eagles and the Spartans need something here offensively 836 left to go here in the third quarter the Spartans looking for their first points and now nearly seven quarters. 19 points down. They're running out of time. They really want to get something going on this series of plays. They want to score, not just get something going. They can't settle for. They shouldn't settle for a field goal. They need to take it in. Spartans are still in this game. As Carter comes back to the line of scrimmage, he sends Savage in motion. As the handoff goes to Brent, Brent in between the tackles. Not much doing there. He loses the football. And it's going to be picked up, hopefully, by Carter. Jawan Carter picks it up, and he f got fell on awkwardly, and that'll bring up a second down and long. One thing about it, Ross, the Spartans haven't fumbled much during the year. That was that was a rarity in itself. As Brent comes to the sideline, it'll be a second down and 16 with eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Norfolk State trailing by 19. Carter sends Taylor in motion. Carter awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. With time, steps up, and he's going to get taken down. Again, another stop behind the line of scrimmage. This is Tavon Loftus, and that's his second sack on the night. 
And that backs the Spartans inside of the 10 yard line to the nine. Some type of way the Eagles have found a way to show up with their defense. You know, they were quite porous coming in here. The ball be spotted at the eight yard line of Norfolk State as Carter. We have Savage to his right. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far on his third down and 22. Carter waits a snap, drops back to pass. With time, bounces in the pocket. Pass is going to be complete to Wanda. Wanda's not going to have enough for the first down, but it gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Or yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. Good job by Awana watching the ball into his hands, making sure he catches it, not allowing it to hit his body and bounce off. And that will bring out Taylor Goaty, E.J. Hicks back deep. And again, you have to credit the defense and Granville Eastman of North Carolina Central for the job they've done as Goaty will get this punt away, and it's gone off the side of his foot. He struggled a little bit today punting the football, and Central will have great field position to start this drive. Inside Norfolk State territory at the Norfolk State 45-yard line with 6.31 left to go here in the third with the Eagles leading 19-0. Now what the defense needs to do is to shore up and make sure they stop the Eagle now. Maybe even get an opportunity to pick up a, a, an interception, a fumble. And you put the ball back in the spot of his hand while they had some time on the clock, Ross. Caldwell fresh off of a 93-yard touchdown pass to his tight end, Sherman McLeod. As Caldwell drops back to pass, pass is going to be complete to Totten. Totten flares out, gets chased down from behind by Dale Craig. And after, after he picks up near first down yardage, they will give him credit of 10 yards to the 35-yard line for the first. The Eagles trying to take advantage, trying to take advantage of the over pursuit of the Spartan defensive line, kicking the ball up over their head in a blind screen, so to speak. Caldwell will send a man in motion as he hands it off to Totten. Totten, no, nothing doing there. As Tyree Givers Wilson on the delayed handoff was there to stop him for a loss of two. They back him up to the 37-yard line. 5:54 left to go here in the third quarter. 19-0, your score. Central with the lead. Another defensive substitution for the Spartans. Number 92 is in the game now. Deshaun Dixon. With 537 left to go. We'll see Chauncey Caldwell come out. Four wide receivers in the formation. Two split to either side. Tighten in the backfield as Caldwell drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Slight hold as the pass is going to be high and incomplete. As Ricky Thomas got around the edge and looked like he was held a little bit. But the pass is incomplete. That'll bring up third down and 12 for North Carolina Central. Pressure by the Norfolk interior defensive line. That brings up a third and 11 situation for the Central Eagles. 524 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Caldwell will look towards the sideline. This will be big for the Spartans if they can get a quick stop here. As the Eagles have a th third down and 12 from the Norfolk State 37-yard line. Caldwell with four on the play clock. Drops back to pass. Looks down the field. Pass is going to be nearly intercepted. Let's see who comes down with it. No one as Bobby Price breaks it up. He did a good job of standing in the way of E.J. Hicks, and it will be a fourth down situation. And see if the punting unit comes out, and they do for Central. Spartan defense on the case, fourth and long. And again, we'll see the punting unit, John Picaro. Back deep is Bobby Price. He stands at his 10-yard line. Picaro gets this one high, end over end kick. That will take a bounce, and it will take a Norfolk State bounce out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Actually, at the 15-yard line, and we'll keep the action here with 5-11 left to go. And the offense back onto the field. Spartans have had a big play here in this third quarter. A 28-yard pass from Carter to Marcus Taylor, but we've also seen an interception. Uh, a couple of miscues on a fumble. Let's see if the Spartans can just pick it up here offensively, trailing by 19 with 5.11 to go in the third quarter. It's a 19-0 ball game in favor of North Carolina Central. 
And Central, again, pinning Norfolk State back deep in their own territory. Savage, you're back in the backfield. Two deep safeties for North Carolina Central as Carter drops back to pass. Pass is going to be incomplete, intended for Williams. And Williams wasn't ready for the pass. And it went by his head there as soon as he turned and looked back towards the quarterback. 11 of 23 now for Jawan Carter. He's been sacked four times here tonight. 111 yards passing. He averages on the year 249 as a penalty flag will be thrown. Defense in no man's land. And it will be offsides against the Eagles. Guilty party, number 46 for North Carolina Central. That's Lofties. He's had a big night. On the line, trying to get an early start there as Carter looks towards the sideline. With 5.08 left to go here in the third quarter, Norfolk State trailing 19-0. Again, Central has kept two defensive backs deep here as Carter will roll right. Looks off for Wana. Wana makes the catch and steps out of bounds. After a pickup of about three on the play out to the 23-yard line, the Spartans need two for the first down. Awana had, Awana had some room on that play, but in the effort to shake the defensive back, he kind of stepped out of bounds. He was so close to the sideline. Two wide receivers to the far side and one to the near as Central presses the line of scrimmage as handoff will actually have uh, RPOs, the pass is going to be complete into the hands of Winstead for the first down at the 31-yard line. And the Spartans will keep the chains moving and the clock as well, trailing by 19. That was a good play by Winstead, man. He grabbed the ball. He had a man draping him over the shoulders. He still hauled it in. Man-to-man -man coverage is going to be hard to stop these Spartans' wide receivers as Carter drops back to pass again. Pass is going to be incomplete looking for Winstead as he was covering over the middle by number 34 for North Carolina Central that's Matt Stevens and Stevens gets the pass break up and he'll bring up a second down and 10 for Norfolk State 122 yards passing for Carter Norfolk State with 426 left to go in the third quarter trailing 19-0 Carter awaits the snap as again the Spartans will check with the sideline 15 on the play clock Carter Gets the signal to his offensive line. Awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. Rolls right. Pass is going to be complete again to Awana. Awana might have gotten three yards on the play. Out to the 35-yard line. Maybe for it will be a third down and six for the Spartans. Carter's checking off the defense this time. He's looking to the line. Once the defense has been set, he's making an adjustment in his play calling. Third down is Central. Still rushing 12. They have 12 players on the floor, on the field, as Taylor catches the football. He'll pick up the first down, and the Spartans will probably decline the penalty as the result of the play gets the ball to the 49-yard line. And the Spartans will have a first down and 10 from the 49 after the after the play. The flag's on the play. It's going to be illegal participation on the defense. And the Spartans will have a first down and 10 from... Their own 49, and again, the Spartans up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Carter awaits the snap, and the ball's going to be fumbled. It's still on the ground, and North Carolina Central will have it. There was a miscue on that play between the center and the quarterback. Carter still checking off his play. Unfortunately, a, a gesture by his hands uh, was misread by the center. King Kiaku will come up with the turnover. With 3.54 left to go here in the third quarter. And Central will have, again, decent field position inside of Norfolk State territory to start this drive. Norfolk State has been pretty good here holding on to the football yeah. this year. They're struggling a little bit. So as, it makes you wonder, did the week off help or hinder the Spartans? As Chauncey Caldwell back to the line of scrimmage. He'll keep it. He'll pull, try to run outside, and he gets taken down. Ricky Thomas right there. He loses the football, but they're going to say that Caldwell was – his forward progress was stopped back in North Carolina Central Territory. Ricky Thomas 
They're on the play. So the Spartans defensively making some plays. Defense on the game. They tried to get the take the ball out of the hands of Caldwell. And this central offense has bogged down a little bit here in the third quarter. Beyond that 93-yard pass play, which went for a touchdown, the Spartan defense has played a little bit better and played that option read by the quarterback better. Mm -hmm. As Caldwell back to the line of scrimmage, four wide outs. He's in the shotgun, tight to his left. Caldwell drops back to pass. Looking out the flat pass is going to be complete into the hands of Stevens. Stevens toes the sideline. He picks up about six on the play. That'll bring up third down and we'll say seven or nine for the Eagles. Caldwell will look to the sideline. 2.45 left to go in his third quarter. As the teams change up their sets here as Caldwell will send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. 2.25 left to go here in the third. Caldwell drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Pass is going to be incomplete. Nearly intercepted off of the head of Nick, excuse me, Nike Martin. He's hurt as he was hit hard by Aaron Chandler. It also went off the hands of Totten and fell harmlessly to the ground. I'm telling you, the Spartans defense is trying to give their teammates every opportunity they can to make some plays. They're really holding their stature, really holding their ground. And we have time. And Nike Martin there was a little hung out to dry by his quarterback. As that ball just hung in the air for a while on that tunnel screen for the wide receiver. Nice job of Aaron Chandler coming to knock the ball loose. And that will bring up another punting situation for North Carolina Central. With 2.21 left to go here in the third quarter. 19 nothing is your score. As the punting unit on the field for Central. Bobby Price stands at his own 11-yard line. As the snap is low. And the punt is away. Bobby Price will allow this one to bounce in front of him. And it will take a Norfolk State bounce out of bounds. At around the 14-yard line. So the Spartans will start there. On this possession with 2.12 left to go here in the third quarter. But you know, Ross, the Spartans can mount drives and they can sustain themselves until they get in the red zone. They just need to take their time, be patient, put one in there. And again, Norfolk State back out onto the field offensively. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Carter has Savage in the backfield. Carter awaits the snap. The handoff will go to Savage. Looking for room to run. In between the tackles, not much there as he breaks past the 15 to the 17. A pickup of about three on the play. And it'll be second down and seven. And the Spartans, again, will keep up the tempo here. As Carter will keep the same formation. Savage to his right. Carter driving back to pass. With time, looking out in the flat pass is going to be intercepted. Off of the hands of Bailey and Martin will come up with the interception. Well, I guess it's any better time for the Eagles' defense to mature. You know, everyone plays Norfolk State very hard, very hard. It's, they seem to have been inspired by the quarterback in the first half. The defense is still in the game. They're still playing that game. And that will bring Chauncey Caldwell out here. With two minutes and actually one minute and 46 seconds left to go in the third quarter, Norfolk State trailing 19 0. Caldwell was set up at the Norfolk State 30 yard line. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Caldwell drops back to pass, looking downfield, and he's going to lob this one up. And the pass is going to be incomplete, thrown out of bounds, and we're going to have a flag thrown as the pass was intended. For Stevens, we're going to have a flag thrown. And let's see. It was away from the intended receiver. What the flag is going to be. Maybe a hold. Actually, pass interference against North Carolina Central. A pick play there. 
And if you're Norfolk State, you take this penalty here. Or do you decline it and make it a second down in 10? Spartans will accept it, and it'll bring up a first down and 25 for North Carolina Central with 142 left to go. Here in the third quarter, Xavier McCoy was guilty on the play. A blocking before the pass was thrown, and Caldwell will come back out to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Caldwell awaits the snap, and he'll pitch it to Totten, trying to break it outside, and he's going to get taken down. At the 40-yard line, a pickup of five. Titan was dragged down by Craig. And that'll bring up a second down and 20 for the Eagles with 130 left to go here in the third quarter, leading 19-0. Spartans have been on task with their pursuit. They're backing up everything that they need to do on defense. So the ball will be spotted at the 41-yard line of Norfolk State. So they give him credit for four yards on the play. Bobby Price also in on the stop. There's the play clock at three seconds. Caldwell sends a man in motion. Play action. Caldwell drops back to pass. Looking downfield, and he's going to get taken down in the backfield. Karan Speller there. Also there for Norfolk State is Deshaun Dixon. With 40 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, Chauncey Caldwell slow to get up. And the Spartans, defensively, they've really had control of this second half or this third quarter. Besides the one play, the 93-yard touchdown play. Actually, both defenses have played well here in the yes. second half with 30 seconds to go. Good point. Central will have to run one more play. It's a third down and 31. As some would say a country mile is Caldwell. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, will await the snap, and he'll hand it off to Totten. Totten in between the tackles, runs hard, gets to the 45-yard line before he stopped. And that will bring up a fourth down, and we'll see the fourth down play as Quintrell Chung gets off the pile after making the stop. To start the fourth quarter, Norfolk State gives up seven points in that third quarter, now trails 19-0 as we move to the fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout. On the field, you're watching me at football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Iconic. People are falling in love with these players. The college coach up there, how long you been in the Army? I said, uh, Coach Brown, I'm only 13. Oh, my God. Gets the football, back to throw, look. 19-0 is your score, Norfolk State. Trailing North Carolina Central here as we move into the start of the fourth quarter. We're ready to go as Central will punt to start this fourth quarter. And we're still looking for the first points of the day for Norfolk State. As the Spartans have been stifled by this North Carolina Central defense. And also you have to credit North Carolina Central today. They have forced three fumbles and... One of those they've recovered, and they've also intercepted two passes for Norfolk State today, who is 15 of 28 through the air for 198 yards, have only rushed for 58 yards here today. And the punt is away, and it's a high kick that Marcus Taylor will allow to bounce, and it will take a bounce into the end zone, and the Spartans will take this uh, to start this drive at the 20-yard line. And we'll see how the Spartans offensively start this fourth quarter. And we'll see who comes out at quarterback. And it will be the freshman, DeAndre Thomas. Thomas, who's played in a game here this year, will get the start here of the fourth quarter. We'll see how the freshman will see what he can do here today as Carter. Struggling just a little bit. We'll see DeAndre Thomas take off on this first down play. Thomas picks up the first down out past the 30. Yard line for the first down. Nice job by the freshman in making the play. And that shows you the depth that we have on our team here at Norfolk State. 
Thomas did a good job, read the defense, pulled it back down, picked up the first down. That's good momentum for the Norfolk State offense. Thomas, the freshman back in, hands it off to Brent. Brent in between the tackles and gets to the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five. It'll be second down and five for the Spartans now. And let's see if the Spartans can get a spark behind the young freshman. As Thomas back to the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Thomas again will hand it off. Brent in between the tackles. He'll pick up the first down out past the 40 to the 42-yard line. And again, the Spartans will keep things going with 14.05 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Trailing by 19. Good job by Thomas, the freshman, trying not to do too much at one time. Brent now to the left of Thomas. Two wide receivers to the far side, once in the near. Thomas drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Pass is going to be complete to Awana. And Awana will get five yards on the play. Maybe four. Out past the 45-yard line to the 46. As, again, the Spartans will move quickly. As... Second down and six as Thomas will roll right. Pass is going to be high, but caught by Winstead. Winstead spins out of a tackle, gets near the 50-yard line, maybe the 49. It'll bring up a third down and a three. He has a pickup of three. Really good plays being sent in to the young freshman quarterback. And also we see Marcus Taylor come to the sideline. Looks like he might be hampered by a little bit of a cramp. We'll check on him as Thomas drops back to pass with Tom again, the freshman. Looking downfield, lobs, pass up to Winstead. He makes the grab, and he's going to be out of bounds, and that'll bring up fourth down. Let's see what the Spartans decide to do. But what a grab by Winstead, Ross. Double cover. And he's in double coverage, catch the ball perfectly in his hands, almost pulled that play off. Stuart Anderson will be back to punt. We'll have to check on Taylor Goatey. As Anderson stands at his own 35-yard line. And it'll be a, a fake as Anderson tries to get to the first down marker, and he doesn't get it. If he does get it, it'll be by the hair of his chinny-chin-chin. Chin. As the mark is right near the sticks, he got hit right at the sticks. We'll see. Right at the sticks. I hope they placed the ball well because he lowered his shoulder, and he got right in there on that line. And they're going to give him credit enough for the first down. Looked like the sticks might have been a little bit uh, pulled back, and they will give him credit for the first down. So, Stuart Anderson, the wide receiver, picks up the first down, and the Spartans offensively will stay on the field. Way to go, Spartans. And the clock will move with 12.45 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Norfolk State trailing 19-0. The Spartans in central territory is DeAndre Thomas. Just stop and play by the officials. As a player has to leave the field for Central. Looks like he has a shoulder or injury issue. Anthony Sherrill. Number 42. And he will trot to the sideline. He'll be replaced by Brandon Bailey. As Thomas back in. Shotgun drops back to pass. Thomas with time looking out and floats a pass out to Winstead and just a tad bit too high as Winstead couldn't bring it down inbounds. It'll bring up a second down and 10. But they're completing that play. So that's a, that's a good indicator. It's just a matter of making an adjustment around the defense so that he can stay within the hash marks in between the numbers. As Thomas comes back, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Second down and 10. Thomas drops back to pass. The freshman steps away from some traffic. Looks downfield. Pass is going to be nearly intercepted as the ball was batted down by number 37, Stephen Stokes. They'll bring up third down and 10. But good job by the young freshman. That was a tight situation. He threw in the double coverage, but if you're throwing the wind stage, you kind of take his – confidence and his athletic ability into consideration on that play it wasn't forced you got to give uh central a good job for the coverage as the spartans will break the huddle with about 15 seconds on the play clock on his third down to 10 
They might actually have to call a timeout. And they will call the timeout with 11.55 left to go. What? 12 minutes, 5 seconds placed on the clock. And we'll take that media timeout. North Carolina Central leading Norfolk State 19 0. The Sparks will have a third down and 10 when we come back on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Playing NFL.com fantasy football is easy. Now you can optimize your starting lineup with just one click. Make it easier to fantasy football with NFL.com fantasy football. Hello, welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 12.05 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Norfolk State trailing North Carolina Central. By score of 19 to nothing, Ross Gordon joined by Glenn Mason on this third down and 10 for the freshman DeAndre Thomas, who replaced Juwan Carter here to start the fourth quarter. Thomas drops back to pass with time. Pass is going to be complete to Marcus Taylor on the drag, and Taylor is slung out of bounds after a pickup of about four. That'll bring up fourth down, and the Spartans will keep their offense on the field. Marcus Taylor, he's the guy you go to when you need to pick up some quality yardage. One of the fastest mans on the field. As Thomas will come back to the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far, and it's fourth down and seven from the 45-yard line of Central. Thomas drops back to pass, steps up, looking for a block, steps under, and he'll be about a yard shy of the first. Spartan showing some depth at the quarterback position on offense. Miles Terman with the stop, and we'll see the Spartan defense back onto the field as Norfolk State today has kept the defense on the field too long. And on the third downs, still struggling. Today, 2 of 13, 1 of 5 on fourth downs. Is the offense back onto the field? Chauncey Caldwell to lead as the handoff goes to Totten. Totten will rush left side, breaks a tackle still on his feet as he gets inside Norfolk State territory. He's pushed out of bounds by Quintrell Chung. Another big run for Totten. He gets to the 35 yard line. It'll be a first down for North Carolina Central. Caldwell paused the offense. They didn't know he was going to hand the ball off up in the interior. And just to cover him, as he started getting some pursuit, he sent the ball the other way. Kind of a misdirection play for the North Carolina Central Eagles. Totten will now take the team lead in rushing today as Caldwell will come to the line of scrimmage in an empty set as Totten comes now to his right in the shotgun. And again, the handoff will go to Titan rushing right side. Same same result as Titan inside the 10, breaks it inside the 5, and he'll get into the end zone for the score. He ran right where the decent defensive tackle for Norfolk State was lured away from in that gap, shot it, took it in there, no one in the secondary to cover him. And again, the Spartans now trail 25 nothing with 10.43 left to go here in the fourth quarter. That's a 35-yard touchdown for Isaiah Totten, his first of the day. And Totten, on the last two plays, covered 61 yards in two plays for the touchdown. That's a two-play drive, 61 yards, 45 seconds taken off the clock with 10.45 left to go. The Eagles now lead Norfolk State 26-0. And a timeout will be taken on the field. North Carolina Central extends its lead over Norfolk State 26 26- to zero. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Miak Football on ESPN3 and the NSU Sports Network. Intelligence helps us change the way we see the world. Hello, welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 10.43 left to go here in the fourth quarter. 26 to nothing is your score. North Carolina Central leading Norfolk State as the sun has come out. Central scores on a two-play 61-yard drive, all of the heavy lifting done by Isaiah Totten. He had all 61 of those yards on that drive for Totten. He now leads Central in rushing with 108 yards. A nine-yard average here to go along with the score. 
Congratulations. As the kick is away, and we'll see Marcus Taylor take it about three yards deep in the end zone, and he'll take a knee, and the Spartans will start this drive from their own 25. So, Ross, let's see if the sun can come out on the Spartans' offense. And we'll have a first down and 10 from the 25-yard line. And the Spartans offensively will try to get something going. They're gathered around Coach Latrell Scott on the near far side, right behind, in front of the press box where the radio booth is. As DeAndre Thomas comes back out, Cameron Brent is the tailback. Three wide receivers to the far side as Thomas drops back to pass with time. Looks downfield, and he's going to get hit from behind. Ball is going to be knocked away, and it's going to be scooped up by the Eagles, and they'll have it. First down and 10. Actually, it'll be first down and goal from the 10. This is not, this is not the North State team that we, we're expecting to see. I'm at a, a loss for words, really. And the freshman might have held on to it for just a tad bit too long. He was looking downfield for Winstead and then bring up a first down and a goal for Central at the 10-yard line. And you know the, uh, the interim coach for uh, North Carolina Central, he's a defensive specialist. Maybe this is the, the game that he shows his expertise because he's really doing a good job with uh, starting a, one of the more potent offenses in the conference. As Caldwell will come back out. Looks like Totten still in the backfield. Actually, a new back in the same play. Rushing left side for North Carolina Central. We'll see Taquan Watson. Watson picks up five on first down. It'll be second down and goal from the five. And again, the Spartans fighting hard here on the defensive side of the football. And... Just have to credit this central offense here in the fourth quarter. As Caldwell again will hand it off to Watson. He rushes left side, breaks off of a tackle, and he'll get into the end zone for the score. Middleton had a chance at him, but he'll get into the end zone from five yards out, and the Spartans now trail 32 nothing, with 10.06 left to go here in the fourth. Hmm. An uncharacteristic situation for Norfolk State University. And again, turnovers have hurt the Spartans today. And in this fourth quarter, sputtering offense. And in this fourth quarter, we've seen Central get things going on the ground as the extra, temp, extra point attempt is up by Lippy, and it is good. And the Eagles now lead 33 0 here with 10.06 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Media timeout taken on the field. We'll take it with them. Norfolk State trailing 33-0 to North Carolina Central right here on the SBN3 and the NSU Sports Network. We couldn't agree more. We are professional grade. GMC. Ten minutes and six seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. North Carolina Central extends its lead to 33-0 over Norfolk State here. As the Eagles... We'll send Jonathan DeLuca out to kick off. And Marcus Taylor will stand at his own end zone. Wind blowing behind DeLuca here in this fourth quarter. As DeLuca will get it away. And it'll be high and it'll be short. And Taylor will actually see this one float back into the end zone. He'll take it three yards deep into the end zone. And look for a hole. And he has a hole following Cameron Brent. Steps outside past the 30-yard line. And he's escorted out of bounds after he makes it to the 35 by number 32, Jonathan DeLuca, the kicker. And it will be a first down and 10 for Norfolk State from their own 35-yard line. Anytime the kicker has to chase you out of the line, that's a good return. And Taylor did a good job. Good job of following Brent as he paved the way. Good job of following your interference on a kickoff return. DeAndre Thomas will check back in at quarterback. Two wide receivers to the far side. Justin Smith lines up in the slot. And we'll see Awana move in motion down to the far side. And so all three wide receivers are to the wide side of the field. Play action. Thomas looking over the middle of the field. He throws the ball right into the hands of a defender. And matriculating his way inside the 30-yard line is number 40 for North Carolina Central, Patrick Connor. 
And we're going to have flags after the play. Maybe from frustration. Granville, I mean, uh, Granville Eastman has our number, I think. You can see that he put his defensive players in position to read the play. They expected that play. That's how they came up with the interception. And flags after the play is, again, that's another turnover for Norfolk State. And we'll see who the flag was on. It was after the play, extracurricular activities. Well, and we'll see after the officials sort this thing out. You expect that emotion from the young teams. You know, obviously they're trying to defend homecoming. They have a lot of alumni here. And there's no reflection on them. They're, they're trying hard. They're putting forth their best effort. Did that week off kind of stilted their reaction a little bit? The guilty party on the unsportsmanlike conduct is Craig Rodwell. That's his first unsportsmanlike conduct. And so the ball will be spotted inside the 15-yard line down to the 14 for North Carolina Central. And we'll see Chauncey Caldwell back out with 9.49 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Back-to-back -back plays and turnovers by the freshman. We have a, a strip sack, and we had an interception as Caldwell. More Hands it off to the first man through, and we're going to have a flag thrown as the ball carrier is new for North Carolina Central. We'll get you his name and number after this as the ball carrier actually was Powell as the hold was called against North Carolina Central. There's a break Ricky Lee. Spartans. Ricky Lee, the freshman, gets the penalty that backs the ball up to the 24 yard line and it'll be a first down in 24 central Powell stays in the backfield three wide receivers to the near side one to the far Caldwell in the shotgun he'll hand it off to Powell rushing left side Powell with a hole gets towards the end zone and we're gonna have another flag thrown at the 14 yard line they're reading that play. They're letting number 52 for Norfolk State come up and pursue. And we're going to see what the flag is. It's going to go against Central. It's going to be a, a hold on Nike Martin. That will keep the ball at the 24-yard line. And so it'll again be a first down in 20 with 9.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Now we need to be weary of that quarterback draw, Ross. And three wide receivers in the formation, two to the near side, one to the far. Again, it's Holmes, same play. And this time Holmes is stacked up. He's got to the line of scrimmage, Deshaun Middleton there. Stop him for a loss of one back to the 25-yard line. It'll be a second down and 21 for the Eagles from the Norfolk State 25. Deshaun doing a good job of reading that play, not getting caught up in pursuit, not being overly progressive, watching his territory. 33 nothing. your score, 835 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Central will take its time with 10 on the play clock, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. The tight end to the near side of the formation is McLeod as the – the end of round goes to Nike Martin. Martin spins away from one tackle, and he gets hit hard by Bobby Price, and he was cleaned up by J.T. Wahi after a pickup of three, maybe four to the 21-yard line. That'll bring up a third down, and we'll say 17 for the Eagles. And we'll let the clock run under seven, under eight minutes to go. In the fourth quarter, 33-0 your score. Central with the lead. As we await the play, Central Caldwell will look towards the sideline with four on the play clock. Let's see if he gets it off in time, and I don't think he did, but they will say he did as Deshaun Middleton makes a stop on the carry by Powell. 
And it'll bring up a fourth down. As they're going to give him uh, credit for no gain there. And we'll see the field goal unit come out. As Lippy will come out from about 38 yards in the middle of the field for the field goal attempt. But even with this field goal attempt, Ross, the Spartans held and did not break. Uh, Central may get out of here with three points. I'm sure of what the score is. It is 33 to nothing. It's a moot point. But I still as like this the, solidified effort. They don't give up. As the field goal is up, and it's good there for Lippy, and that makes it a 36 nothing ball game with 6.48 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, the Spartans. Turn it over and do a good job of holding Central to three points, and the offense will get back out onto the field. Again, uh, in danger of going scoreless for the last eight quarters, two ball games. They were shut out last week, 17-0 by, by FAMU and North Carolina Central after putting up 40 last week. After putting up 40 last week against Howard, doing a good job here today, putting up 36 against the Spartans. And holding them to zero points. They gave up 35 last week to out. Yeah, I think what they're doing is taking advantage of our young quarterbacks, you know. Uh, as I said earlier, Eastman is a, is a defensive specialist. And uh, he's showing what he can do and handling the, up until this point, porous, as it were, North Carolina Central defense. As DeLuca will come out to kick off again for the Eagles. Luca gets it away, and he'll drive Taylor around four yards deep in his end zone, and he'll bring it out again. Carter will actually, Taylor will run out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive offensively. A little frustration going on between some of the players down there. It's been a long day for the Spartans. We'll see who comes out at quarterback for the Spartans. And it's going to be the freshman, Dan DeAndre Thomas. And Thomas will send Winstead to the near side. Awana, Williams, and Smith to the far side of the field. Brent in the backfield with Thomas. First down and 10 from the Norfolk State 25. The handoff will go to Brent. Right side and big hole for Brent. Picks up the first down and more. Gets hit as he gets past the 35 down to the 39-yard line. It'll be enough for a first down with 6.33 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Good job by the North State offensive line providing that hole. He went right off the right side. Jalen Powell is over there. Terrell Lipscomb is over there. As Again, the handoff will go. This time to Savage. Savage breaks a couple of tackles, stays on his feet as he gets across the 45-yard line to the 46. Nice job of dragging tacklers by Savage. The tackle was made by Marcus Martin, and the Spartans again back up on the football as DeAndre Thomas will hand it off to Savage. Savage will pick up the first down again inside of North Carolina Central Territory down to the 41-yard line. And the Spartans will keep the chains moving on the ground. This time they run to the left again. That's Winstead and Lipscomb. As the Spartans back to the line of scrimmage. Again, the handoff to Savage. Again, over the left side, Savage. Dragging tacklers inside the 40 before he's brought down. Tackle made by Aaron Duncan. Savage goes to the sideline as Hewlett checks in. As a pick up a four on the play. As again, Thomas looks to the sideline. Two wide receivers to the far side. One to the near side. That's Winstead. Thomas will roll right past. Is going to be incomplete. Throw it in a good spot there. If he threw it any other way, it might have been picked six. off. He was looking for Awana on a rollout there. And it will bring up a third down and six for the Spartans. And probably four down territory. And that's where your backup quarterback gets a chance to get the timing down with one of the leading receivers on the team. And again, just an off day for this offense for Norfolk State as DeAndre Thomas 
We'll send Justin Smith in motion to the far side of the field. Three wide outs over that way. One to the near side. Thomas drops back to pass. And pressure's coming. And he's going to loft it in direction of Winstead. He'll make the catch. It won't be enough for the first down, but it will be about a yard shot. That was a great job there by Thomas just to get that football out as a flag is thrown near the 47-yard line in the area of a hold against the Spartans. Let's see what the penalty flag is going to be. And while we're waiting for that call, it was a good job for Winstead on that catch as well. As Justin Red will get penalized there for the hole, and the ball will be spotted near the 50 at the 48-yard line of North Carolina Central. And again, a lot of... A lot of work there by DeAndre Thomas, but you saw his arm strength there backing up. Yeah. He found Winstead uh, coming across the field, but the Spartans will have a third down and long. Thomas drops back to pass, looking down the field, and he's going to get taken down, and the helmet will come off too. As the sack by Miles Terman. As the Spartans were looking downfield, just couldn't get anything uh, to come open for the freshman DeAndre Thomas. And Thomas lost his helmet, and due to the new uh, concussion protocol, he's going to have to sit out of play. As Stuart Anderson will get this punt away. Got to check on Taylor Goldy as Anderson will get this one away, and it will bounce inside the 10, and he will pin Central back deep at their own six-yard line, and will keep... The game rolling with 428 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Central leading 36 nothing. Norfolk State on the road next week. Traveling down to Savannah State. Game time is at 3 o'clock p.m. on well, next Saturday. Then they are on the road again at North Carolina A&T before finishing up their last two conference games here at home against Howard and Morgan State. For Central, they will uh, travel up to Delaware State next week, then host Edward Waters, then travel to Bethune-Cookman and host North Carolina a &T to round out their home schedule as Ramadan, the new quarterback in for Central, he hands it off to Watson. Watson gets banged around as he gets back to the five-yard line, maybe the six. Chavis and also Price on the stop for the Spartans. It'll bring up a second down and long. With the clock moving with 4:10 left to go in the fourth quarter, Ross, I haven't seen I haven't seen the Spartans blitz as much as they usually do. Maybe that's due to Carwell and that draw that he likes to do. But that was missing, I, I thought, in today's game. As Ramadan will come back again, he'll hand it off to Watson, and again Watson will get hit in the backfield, and he's taken down by Dale Craig, but not after he picked up. Three or four yards did a good job of dragging his feet there. And he'll bring up a third down and long for Central as a flag is thrown. Let's see who's it's, who it's against. And the Spartans are backing up. And it's going to go against Norfolk State. Deshaun Dixon gets hit with the face mask penalty. And it'll give Central a first down at the Norfolk State 25, excuse me, at the Central 25-yard line with 348 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll first down. Watson stays in at tailback with Ramadan. Three right outs to the far side, one to the near. Ramadan gave Central a boost the last time these two teams met last year. When Central lost that game 28-21, the Spartans were up 21-0 at the half. Ramadan came in and... Powered Central to 21 yard, 21 points as, again, Watson with the carry. Blackwell comes up with the stop along with Nigel Chavis. Pickup of one out to the 26-yard line with 3.11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. You know, the Spartans really need to just put this game behind them, go into their practices next week like it never happened. Uh, it just seemed to be a little bit out of kilter. This isn't the typical... Norfolk State team that we've seen play this year. And this is the most points the Spartans have given up. Here this year. 
as again the handoff will go to Watson. Watson rushing left side. Tries to cut back inside, does, gets out to the 29 yard line before he's stacked up. Speller in on the stop. Dixon there. Also, Quinterly comes up from his safety spot. The defense has been on the field a lot today, and they've, they've done a really, really good job in spite of. I know that sounds kind of awkward with a 36-point lead, but you kind of have to be here to see it. Two minutes to go here on the f- clock, and the Spartans will see Central run this third down and five play with under two minutes to go, 155 to be exact. And this will be a keeper by Ramadan. Ramadan spins his way forward and loses the football, and it's going to be picked up by Norfolk State. So Ramadan turns it over, and the Spartans get the football. Dale Craig gets it on the carom, and the Spartans with a little bit of life here with 145 left to go here in the fourth quarter. That's one thing about the Norfolk State defense. They're not going to give up. I like that about the Spartans. That's a Spartan characteristic. Taylor Gotti got a hand in on there on that play, number 33. And it looked like he helped precipitate that turnover there. As Norfolk State will come back, the freshman DeAndre Thomas, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near, and Cameron Brent will be in the backfield. Spartans punted it away on their last possession. As Thomas awaits the snap. Drops back to pass with time. Pumps, looks downfield, looking for Winstead. Winstead. Ran the wrong direction, looking for, a, looking for a flag from the field judge and doesn't get it. And that'll bring up second down. I think he was interfered with, but it depends also on the proximity of the ball and if the wide receiver can get to the ball. I think that was the option that the referee or the field official went to on that play. And it will be a second down and 10 for... Norfolk State, Thomas, back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. That's Winstead. Brent, the back in the backfield, as Brent will get the carry. He breaks one tackle, stays on his feet, and gets a block, and kicks near the first down marker. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line, and the Spartans will use pace here with 120 left to go here in the fourth quarter. As Thomas... We'll come back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side on this second down and one. Thomas drops back to pass. With time pass, is going to be complete to Savage over the middle. He'll have the first down inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. It'll be a first down there. That time, Thomas checked down on his receivers. That's a good sign of maturity and development. Under a minute to go here in the fourth quarter, 55 seconds to be exact, as Thomas will quickly get back to the line of scrimmage. Thomas drops back to pass with time. Looking into the direction of his tight end, Williams. Williams comes up with the catch inside the 15. It'll be a first down there. Nice job of drilling that one in by the freshman Thomas. And a good catch by Williams. He really protected the ball on that play. For Williams, that's his first catch of the day. And now Thomas will quickly move with 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Thomas drops back to pass. Thomas looking right. Still with time. Rolling right, looking in the back of the end zone, and in and out of the hands of Marcus Taylor. And we're going to have a a quick opportunity to catch our breaths here with 23 seconds to go. Nice job of extending the play by DeAndre Thomas. Thomas went through the hands of a defender, and Marcus Taylor had it in his grasp, just couldn't hold on to it. Which is a rarity. And I think there was also a hold against the defense, and it will be an automatic first down or maybe a pass interference or a hold, whichever one. It'll be a first down and goal for the Spartans at the six-yard line with 26 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Hewlett and Savage split Thomas in the backfield. The freshman awaits the snap as he sends Awana in motion. Thomas drops back to pass. With time now steps up. He'll run for it. Looks towards the end zone and hit a freshman will get in. Nice job of weaving his way through traffic and Norfolk State on the board. 
Nice job by DeAndre Thomas. Uh, running it in from six yards out. And the Spartans now trail 36-6. to six. We're a young team. Thomas shows that we have depth. He watched and see exactly what the secondary was going to do. Found his gap. Looked for his receivers. Nothing there. Take it inside. Score six. And Norfolk State will go for two with 16 seconds remaining. As Thomas will move to the left hash, he'll have Savage to his right. A dual threat quarterback coming out of Fork Union was DeAndre and the Spartans now will set up as Williams comes in motion to the near side. We're going to have a flag thrown and it's going to be a delay of game against the Spartans. And it's going to be a longer opportunity here. Instead of three yards, it'll be an eight-yard point after touchdown attempt for DeAndre Thomas and the Spartans offense. Thomas today, 5 of 11. For 31 yards, he also has a rushing touchdown. Thomas drops back to pass, looking into the end zone. Pass is going to be knocked down, looking for a wanna. Pressure coming in his face quickly as Thomas got it away. There was a man open and Savage coming out of the backfield. Just didn't hit him, but again, the Spartans get on the board. Yeah, in a situation like that, the pass needs to be a little bit quicker from the freshman Thomas. Uh, he had a receiver open. But you have got to get that pass fast enough into his hand before the defense can adjust to your throw and to your release. So Josh Nardone will come out to kick off for the Spartans as Norfolk State on the board. 36-6 to six is your score. Nardone. will await the central special teams unit to come out on the field as Nardone set this to get this one away and he puts it deep and Totten will call for a fair catch at the 19 yard line and central with 16 seconds left to go We'll have it. First down and 10 from the 25. And we'll be able to take a knee to end this ball game. Okay, Ross, if you're the Spartan coaching staff, what do you tell your guys now? Just got to get back to work. And I think that's what Coach uh, Scott has always told his young men. And you can't allow this to keep you down. You work to get back at it. And you... Work to to better yourself from the week before, and I think the Spartans will thirty six to six as they travel down to Georgia next week, as Ramadan will take a knee, and that'll do it here at Dick Price Stadium, Norfolk State will fall to North Carolina Central. Your final score will be thirty six to six. Ross Gordon joined by Glenn Basin and Glenn as we wrap this game up. A couple of things that we can look at. Turnovers were big for the Spartans, especially in the second half. Trail 12 nothing at halftime. Uh, it just couldn't get things going offensively, and that's where the Spartans have struggled for the last two two weeks. And that's what I've been about, the defense having a good game, Ross. Uh, that was a very good pointer about our, the turnovers. That's where we got hurt at. And North Carolina Central took advantage of those. Other, remove those turnovers, and the defense is the defense that we know. And again, one big thing for Norfolk State, as you look at this ball game. Uh, again, your defense played well. Your offense couldn't get going. You have to get back to what you were doing on the offensive side of the football to, to find yourselves in a better spot. Uh, you know Juwan Carter has had two off weeks. He's played well his whole here, his whole career here at Norfolk State. He just has to get back to doing what he does well. Even though he got hit a couple of times today, you know that he's capable of making some plays. And let's consider that, the career here. That's been two years. He's a very young man. He's still developing. You can see the potential that all the quarterbacks have. And on the other side, Johnson Caldwell. He led his team, made a big play down the stretch, ran for a touchdown. 
threw for a touchdown, and you have to credit the, the offensive line down the stretch for North Carolina Central for making some plays. And Coach Eastman might have secured his job by doing a good job of breaking down the North State offense and putting his players in the right place to make some plays. And that's two straight wins for North Carolina Central, who improves to 3-3 three and three overall. Now 2-1 and one in conference play. Norfolk State falls to 3-3 three and three as well. And 1-2 and two now in conference play before they get on the road next week down in Savannah, Georgia. Game time is 2 o'clock down there. We thank you all for listening here today and watching. So for Glenn Mason, I'm Ross Gordon. So long from Dick Price Stadium here in Norfolk, Virginia, where your final score is 36-6, North Carolina Central with the win. All games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN and the NSU Sports Network.